What? <laughs> I I do this thing where I try and do ten seconds of silence. I know, but you, you every know. time I do it. Right when I'm about to start saying it, you will say something and break the silence. So then, so then I'll start Usually waiting again for another 10, 10 seconds of silence. I didn't know we were doing 10 seconds of silence. He said, let me get my Larry King on. And he got quiet. And I was like, I guess that's a 10 second break. I didn't and know all that sudden, meant. All of a sudden, James like, look at that bear. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was going He's on. He's like, all right, I'll let that one pass. I didn't, didn't know if it know. was. Nine seconds later, <laughs> look at that bear. <laughs> you bastard, shut your mouth. I didn't know it was 10 seconds. Uh, uh, big ass beard. It's a. Frack Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, baby, for a brand new year of Frag Tag Radio. And here with you today are your boys, Pradius. And Jay to the Ray. And Steve O. Oh, 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 oh. oh uh, happy 2013 to everyone. Uh, 19 days later. Yeah, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Better <laughs> late than never, they say. Well, well, Officially, we have one episode so far this year, but that episode was actually recorded like day before New Year's, so it was actually recorded last year. Yeah. So this is officially the new first episode of the new year, um, and it, and it is finally time for the for the Frag Tag Awards. But before we get into that, of course, before before we get into that, we got to get that plug out there. All right, Dude, we should we get, should add smoke tip as a freaking get that huh? plug out. The <laughs> Xbox news by Bright AI. Holy shit! It is a great <laughs> app. Starting that off, I mean, it is just a fast loading, zero, zero force, force closes, closes stylish app. I mean, it's just so slick. I mean, Microsoft could have made it themselves. They probably could have. Yeah. I, I, it just looks official. I mean, when you open it up, you're looking at it, you're like, man, this thing is awesome. And it is. This, this is where it's at. And then you start browsing around. You're like, this thing, this app feels like it's going to be a fast app. And yeah. you start browsing around, and it is. Yeah. It's fast. It drops the balls on all uh, other apps. You see a video, you're like, I bet you I could touch on that, and it'll probably start playing instantly. And you do, and it does. Uh -huh. And it's just a miraculous Touch on oh, that. Oh, my mm. goodness. What a great app. What a great app. Bright AI, of course. Great company. You great know, company. Chelsea Soccer News. Woo! Duke Nukem Sounds. They got that Battlefield 3 news for J-Ray up in oh, that piece. I love the Battlefield 3. PS3 news. Yeah. Got a little bit of everything. God bless that app. Uh, and bless then, of course, if you're, uh, if you're on iOS, you can catch us through... Uh, the podcast, the podcast app, app, brand new to iOS 6. Mm -hmm. Just type in Fragtag Radio. We'll come right up on that puppy. And right then on, up. on uh, both platforms, Stitcher Radio. Mm. Yeah. Catch yeah, your boys on Stitcher Radio. And, uh, of course, uh, holler at us on the Twitter, at Fragtag Radio. We're always looking for some questions to be answered on the show, opinions, whatever. You just want to shout, let us know. Also, you can hit us up on the official site, fragtagradio.com where the new episodes are exclusive for a whole 15 seconds before it's <laughs> posted anywhere else. So if you want that 15 seconds of exclusivity, head on over to FragTagRadio.com. Put down Facebook. Mm -hmm. But you could go there, but put down Facebook for a second. Go to FragTag. Like it, Ooh. share it, talk about it, word of mouth. This is a powerful, powerful Ooh. machine. And uh, with that in mind, we're just going to roll right into the awards. Right into it. Right into the like awards. Uh, down the hill. It was it was a pretty good year for gaming. What do you think? I thought it was pretty 2012, good. 2012, pretty good year for gaming. Oh. I blacked out most of that year. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how good it was. Yeah. We barely even remember any of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so um, you want to just uh, start at the top and roll on down the list? We'll do it. How about so that? for Xbox 360 Game of the Year, we pretty much all agreed Halo 4. Yeah, Halo 4 all the way. For Xbox 360 Game of the Year. Good job, 343. You put Bungie to shame. PS3 Game of the Year is uh, pretty obvious on this one. There wasn't a whole lot of exclusives for PS3, but Journey was the standout there. Le unless you thought that, you know, <laughs> PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale should have got the Game of the Year. No, no I don't think so. You don't think no, so? I don't think so. We don't even get a single clap from Jay Ray. There we go. For Journey. Oh. Journey was classic, though. It was a very good game. Um... We, we, you, 
Game of the year, um, Super Mario Brothers U is uh, pretty much the consensus around here. Yeah. PC game of the year is also Diablo 3. Uh, that was pretty much wholeheartedly agreed on, too. And so, mm-hmm. arcade game of the year, Walking Dead was my pick. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was your it was pick. Mine as well. Hands pick. down. I mean, it was just... I don't think there was any. There was some great arcade games. It wasn't game, game of the year, <coughs> Spike VGA. Yeah, I know that was just. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't game of the year, but it was arcade game of the year. It was enough for us to stick our frag to it. Yeah. Uh, best handheld game of the year: Assassin's Creed Liberation. Now, handhelds was down in a kind of a down year this year, just because of mobile games seem to be taken it, over. It was. It was. But there was a few diamonds in the rough, and Assassin's Creed Liberation was one of them. True that. Um, best mobile game. Now, here is the only, we. You said Modern Combat Four. Yeah. Um. I I think Raven Sword. Of course, they're both really good. Raven Sword Shadowlands is really good too. That would be all depends favorite. on what you're looking for. Modern Combat Four is your Call of Duty esque experience, and Raven Sword is your Skyrim esque experience. So, uh, best RPG. Uh, now, although this could be sort of an action RPG, it's more of an RPG than an action game. So, Mass Effect Three was pretty much our consensus pick. Unless yeah. I don't know, Steve, you agree with there, that? There really wasn't a lot of awesome RPGs this past I know. year. You're it right it was that. almost like they got scared. Like you know, when Two Worlds Two came out, they're all like, "No." And then uh, a few other games tried their luck at the RPG system, and none of those really sold very well. If you're if you're not a blockbuster RPG that's known, then it's not going to sell really well. And I think I think I, th- I think we've seen that throughout this whole generation, really. Yeah. Uh, lots of great RPGs came out. You know, Lost Odyssey, uh, Infinite Undiscovery, Resonance of Fate. All those were awesome Japanese RPGs that uh, just didn't quite uh, meet up to snuff with the sales. Yeah, J- JRPGs is our next category, too. And yep. they're, they're few and far between nowadays. But uh, Final Fantasy 13 2 is pretty much the only pick for this one. Yeah. You know? And... and uh, I was really glad that they got their act together with thirteen dash two. Speaking of that, just just to change subjects briefly, thirteen or Lightning Saga or whatever. Yeah, Lightning Returns is going to be weird. It's almost there's no parties no more. Yeah. Parties are gone. You just play as lightning. Yeah. And you there's actually a dodge roll button, and for the first time ever, you use the left stick to move her around. Yeah. Now the paradigms gone. Now the paradigms are outfits. Uh-huh. Whereas there's like the commando suit, the ravager suit, but what may and you you can take up the three outfits in the every the trailer battle. I saw looked pretty dope. Yeah, it, it's, it's people that first impressions have been good, but the three you can take three suits in the battle, and now instead of switching paradigms, you switch your suits. But here's where it gets different: the commando suit you can assign four abilities to, boom, and they become the face buttons. Is there a stripper class where you just have lightning run around nude, or there are, that would be? Oh, I hope so. Unconfirmed, but would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> would be amazing. <laughs> oh boy, see some ta ta. I, uh, I was looking at one picture of her. She was looking like straight out of the Matrix with some sunglasses on, and that's and... probably the outfits because all the outfits when you change paradigms, it makes them look different. It's, yeah. but it's really kind of cool. It got. You know, it, it's they're going an action route, and by the way, they said this is not the end of the Fabula Chris or. Uh, Nova Crystalis series. I thought it was. I thought they said it was. They did, but they came out this week and said this is not the end, and that Final Fantasy Type O and Final Fantasy Versus have not been canceled, and they are still working on them. Well, Type O already. Type O is out in Japan, yeah. right? Yeah, but this doesn't have a Western port for it, and they're right. they're saying that they're 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 not out of the question to be a Western port. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Agito, not that's Type O. Uh, uh, versus Versus. Is actually still being, you know, made. So, yeah. So anyway, moving on. A uh, best action. Oh, sorry, Jeff. No, no. I was just gonna say real quick. We need to learn Japanese so we can go ahead and get one of those games and be like Konichiwa. And play Import this game the Janks and, and play, yeah. play them ahead of time. Sounds good. Uh, best action RPG: Borderlands Two. I agree with that. Um, it was they, a great game. They needed to, I think, uh, just from hearing from everybody playing and everything, they should have changed it to like the Diablo system, though. Because P for the with looting, his ninja yeah. looting is yeah, uh, the insane. The looting ninja over here. <laughs> you got to be careful with him. Baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, man. Uh, Borderlands 2, it doesn't really matter, though, because you can just dupe all your items and give and whoever you're playing with. You just give them every single item you have, all your money, exit out of the game, and then they've got everything, and then you come back in the game and you still got all your stuff. So Really? Yeah. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. 
Yeah. Like, if me and you play Borderlands 2, I'll, I'll go in your game. I'll give you every single item I have. I've got... I, my, my money is maxed out at $999 million. I'll give it all to you, and then I'll just leave the game, and you'll have it all, and then I'll come back, and I'll still have all my stuff. Because you didn't save? Right. It's dashboard that is. Ooh, that's horrible. That's great. For that's horrible. He loves those boys. I mean, <laughs> Dogged him and Finium for like Skyrim. He was all over that puppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like for, for <laughs> Diablo 3, it was always awesome to sit there and be like, what did you get in your loot? And he would say, I got this, this, and this. And in my loot, I would say, oh, I got this, this, and this. And then it made like a trade. Yeah. You know, make you make you want to sit there and go, well, I'll Made you want to trade more, that. yeah. yeah. Well, Borderlands of... is probably intended to do that. That's more of a glitch, you know what I mean? Kinda. It can't be that way with new Loot Ninja over here. <laughs> if there's one, there's more, you know? <laughs> if there's a will, there's a way, and I will find it. Yeah. <laughs> that is for so, sure. Wait, but yeah, Borderlands 2, it was great. Uh, speaking of which, I just downloaded the Season Pass and the first three DLC expansions yesterday, so we need to get down on that. I'm down, I'm down. We need to get down on that. Uh, best overall first-person shooter is surprise, surprise, Halo Four. Halo Four. Yeah, yeah. Best overall third-person shooter is Max Payne Three. Now there might be a few people out there who is like, first-person shooter should have been Black Ops Two. It was, it, it was a close second. Yeah, it, they made a good improvement this year with Call yeah. of Duty. I, I was impressed. And it was about time because Modern Warfare Three was a letdown. Yeah, it was. And uh, also. Third person shooter, I'd say a close second was Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Yeah, Max yeah, Payne 3 and nice. Ghost Recon. Yeah. Those two were neck and neck. They yeah. were both great games. Absolutely. Oh, speaking of which, I just downloaded the uh, Raven Strike uh, campaign expansion. I downloaded that. Yeah, I haven't checked it out. But... I just played it a couple of days ago. It's three missions. Each each mission will take you about an hour. So it's about three hours long. for the. Uh, but it, uh, I'll uh, review it later on in the show. But it, it, it's worth the money. Best survival horror, and now this is a little bit wishy-washy because only about half the game is survival horror. Yeah. But Resident Evil 6 was the only thing that fits in that category. Yeah, there wasn't many survival horrors this past year no, either. No, there wasn't. There wasn't. Uh, best individual sports title, Forza Horizon. Best team sports title, FIFA 13. Uh, Forza Horizon is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And I'll talk about that later on in the show. But, For sure. Um, best action-adventure game. Now I don't. I think it's Assassin's Creed Three, but you had the Darkness Two. Darkness Two is a, a good game, very good game. The sa uh, best sandbox game, Far Cry Three. Well, that's oh yeah, you skipped that one. Be best sandbox game, that's Far Cry Three. I did my fault. I'm sorry. Yep, you're right. You're right. Far Cry Three. Yeah, and uh, I'll talk about that mm -hmm. later in the show too. That's well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah, that, that's a pleasant. Big surprise. improvement over Far Cry Two from Hell. what J Ray says. Oh yeah, uh, and I'll get into all that. But yeah, and then Action Adventure. We just talked about that. Uh, Assassin's Creed Three and Darkness Two is what we have. Yep. Uh, best stealth game. Dishonored. Dishonored. And hands down, Dishonored was unbelievable. I am just now. Ghost Recon it. was also a good stealth game. It was. Um, a but let me tell you, I've been so impressed with Dishonored playing through it, and I'll talk about that later in the show. Cry so, Crisis 3 is shaping up to be good. Have you been watching any of the, yes, any of the videos? Um, man, Crisis 3 is going to be awesome. This is going to be a great, great, great Q1 and Q2 for video games. It's going to be a great year for games. Yeah. It so really it's, it's, like, it's like a last hurrah for this generation. It's going to be It's going to be fantastic. Uh, best racing, Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed. Now yeah. I haven't played this, obviously, it's, but it's a fun, me, fun, it'll be a fun hands game. down. Yeah, yeah. like I, I played the demo before P got the retail copy, and it was awesome. It's tons of fun, dude. Yeah, I mean the demo was fun. The demo was pretty awesome. Um, best fighting, Tekken Tag Tournament Two. Um, there was a lot of fight. Wasn't a lot of fighting games that came. It out. It also could have been Persona Four. Yeah, it, that 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 was it. They were pretty much neck and neck. This wasn't a big year for fighters. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, best platformer, Mark of the Ninja, great game. It was a great game, but that also kind of makes me think there wasn't that many great platformers this past year either. Well, there was some decent ones. I mean, you had Deadlight, you had Mark of yeah. the Ninja, um, you had. Uh, I guess you could call Tails sort of a platformer RPG mix. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There were some good games, uh, platform, not great. Most of them were all arcades. Yeah. You know? uh, Sonic 4 Episode 2. Yeah. There, there was some good ones. I, I, I think Mark of the Ninja stood out. It did. It did. Uh, best puzzle game, Sound Shapes. Wasn't a big year for puzzle games, but Sound Shapes for Vita is very, very popular. Um, You know, that... I haven't played it much. I don't think any of us have, but we kind of went with a consensus on that. that yeah, because... That's what everybody's been saying, so... Yeah. Uh, next game, uh, best motion game. And this is another category where there wasn't a whole lot out there. 
but I think there was one standout, and that was Fable the Journey, which uh, I actually did get a chance to play quite a bit when I was in Florida on my dad's Connect because they have a huge room, and uh, he, he got it for Christmas. And yeah. uh, it was actually, you know, a cool game. I, I, I thought it was yeah, great. Yeah, it was. Um, best graphics. Halo 4. Now, me personally, I would probably agree with that, but I would say a very close second is Forza, Forza Horizon. 4. Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, Forza Horizon. Forza Horizon's graphics are so, so good. And then uh, down here for best soundtrack, it has Halo 4, but uh, we had changed that to uh, Assassin's Creed. Okay. Uh, right. It just didn't get updated on the yeah. list here. Yeah, that, and that's cool, but both of them had great soundtracks. Yeah, Halo so 4 and Assassin's Creed, they, both of them had good soundtracks. Uh, best story, The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Now, when we say The Walking Dead, we're obviously talking about episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 all together. All together, yeah. All together, and yes. And I, that... And that was a close call as well because there was a few good stories. Mass yeah, Effect Three had a really good story. Yeah, yeah Mass Effect Three. And did. that was Halo a close. Four had a great yeah, story. You did. You did. Um, there was a lot of good games out this year that had some good stories. So, um, to be honest with you, had I known what I know now, Far Cry Three would have been up in there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a great story. How's there, the story too? on uh, Max Payne Three, the World of Warcraft expansion? Uh, it's not bad. I mean, granted, I've been kind of rushing with that, but the from what I've caught and from what I've heard other people talking about how the, the Pandarans uh, are included and everything, it's actually not bad. Uh, a nice little addition for those uh, PC WoW players. So, Out of all the expansions that, that have come out for it, story-wise, what would you say has been your favorite? Um, <clears throat> story-wise, I would have to probably say... Uh, leading up to the expansion until the expansion came out, Wrath of the Lich came to me because of the undead, you know, yeah. type of deal. That was peak of my interest, but I, it kind of faltered when I played the game. With Mr. Pandaria, it was quite the reverse. I was like, oh, this is going to be crap. And I played the game and read the story, and it was a lot better than I was expecting. So the wow factor put, put it. The wow factor. Yeah, the wow you factor. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, yeah, so. So. Now we're going to go to best multiplayer in Halo 4. I agree. And let's stop for a second and talk about this because there was a lot of people that were actually pretty upset with the uh, uh, the co-op campaign. What is it called again? Spartan Ops. Spartan, Spartan Ops. Ops with episodes 1 through 5. And they supposedly, since the Halo 4 team has stopped working on the single player and the multiplayer side of it as much. They, oh. they dedicated most of that team now to episodes 6 through 10 of Spartan Ops. To make them and, better. And I, everything I've read, IGN did an article on it saying that 6 through 10 is going to be like 50 times better than 1 through 5. Where they were saying 1 through 5 kind of reminded them of uh, of like arenas with wave after wave of enemies. They yeah. say that 6 through 10 is more like full campaigns. It's and they say, time, yeah. they say they interlock with the story way better. Than one through five because one through five you kind of watch the video, then you play and it's almost like a horde mode. You know what I mean? Well, uh, episode six comes out Monday. Yeah, I know. And, yeah. and and they say just get ready because it's not even going to compare to episodes one through five. They say that it's just going to be no comparison. So I thought that got me kind of excited. I thought that was pretty cool. Definitely. Um, best something. Best um, IP. But yeah. Best new IP. Best new IP. Uh, uh, Dishonored. Hands Dishonored. Down. Hands down. Yeah. There, there, that was just. Uh, there wasn't even. I even production. got that for Christmas, and I've been playing that off and on. So, so uh, Sleeping Dogs was also a good new IP. Yeah. Best DLC expansion for PC. We just talked about it, Mr. Pandaria, for World of Warcraft. Yes, sir. Best DLC expansion for 360 PS3, and I'll talk about this a little later. Is Dragonborn DLC great? great. Awesome. It is. It, I, I think it's up there with the with the Minerva's Dens of the. It world. was way better than Dawnguard. Oh my god! Even though Dawnguard did get you the best companion of all time. I still S use her. Serana is still awesome. Use her. Yeah, I still use her, and I gave her the Vampire Sword. Yeah, you know, I made her her own Daedric armor and everything. I know, me too. Chick pimped out. But you said that you can't marry her, right? No, no, that's the only. Well, downfall. Which is a sad thing because I would totally marry Serana. I would murder my wife <laughs> and marry Serana. Sorry, baby. In a, in a heartbeat. The cool thing is, anytime you want to turn into a vampire, all you gotta do is start a conversation with her, and she'll turn you into a vampire. Yep. I don't. I play as a werewolf. But what about getting cured though? If getting cured was was easy, getting cured is a lot easier than it used to be. Thanks to Dawn Guard. In Dawn Guard, there's a way to cure yourself of vampirism. A lot easier than it used to. And can you walk during the day like Serana does? Yeah, because when you did Dawn Guard, there's uh yes, you can. I forgot why because but there's a there's a way now that you can do it. Like there's also potions that completely take away all the effect. 
Oh, okay. And um, yo, I'll, yo, I'll have to look into that. But yes, you can. Um, it doesn't have the the game changing effects that the old vampire stage used to because you're a new kind of vampire. You're a vampire lore, not a normal vampire. Yeah. Um, moving on. Best uh, character. Best character, and I I think we all agreed that Cortana from Halo yeah. Four was. Just, she did a phenomenal job. She uh, really did with that character, especially that she, with the split personality type thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it was great. I, I I thought it was one of the best performances in video game history. To be quite honest with you, yeah, I, I thought it was great. And she was hot to boot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, best HD remake. Uh, I know you got this. I haven't played it. Doom at Three, all. BFG. Doom 3 BFG. BFG. This uh, reminds me of how of like how they did with the Halo Anniversary uh, edition. Like they completely <clears throat> revamped the graphics. It's it, it, it's not just ported For the Doom game one over. and two, or is it just yeah, third? J- j- just Doom Three? Okay. Yeah, but they completely overhauled the graphics. I mean. Yeah, I mean, you can still tell it's an older game, just like Anniversary, but, I mean, graphically, I mean, looking at it, I would say that it came out maybe a year and a half, two years ago. You know, it, it doesn't look like a game that's six, seven years old or however old it is. Right. Not, not, not by any means. Best HD Collection, Devil May Cry HD Collection. Best game... All three Devil May Crys for, like, what, 30 bucks? You can't beat that. Yeah. Best game you've never heard of, uh... Binary, Binary domain. domain. I know you really enjoyed that. This is a game that that I I, I bought on a whim. I, I wanted a new game. I was in GameStop. It happened to have just come out. Uh, I picked it up. It's like Gears of War, but you're it's a fighting lo- locust. You're fighting like robots and stuff. But uh, since it's made by Japanese uh, developers, it's got like a uh, RPG uh, element mixed in with it, where you uh, you can interact with the characters and choose different conversation options. You can even uh, get uh, get your character laid in the game based on what you say to one of your party members. So uh, I thought I thought that was was really awesome. Uh, the, the combat is really tight. The multiplayer wasn't all that. It wasn't was no Gears of War multiplayer, but the campaign was great. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, and you probably haven't heard of it, you're probably like, what the hell is Binary Domain? You could probably get it for like. 10 15 bucks now definitely it's worth checking out if you like third person shooters all right uh most pure fun now uh obviously i haven't played it so i couldn't put sonic all-star racing which is what you, you guys had put yeah uh mine would be far cry 3 uh, yeah. that, that would be my pure fun game um, now what, what what made it pure fun for you for far cry and then i mean it's just a game that when you start playing it you don't really want to put it down to me it was just it's, so su- it's one of those games that sucks, sucks you, you in, in. yeah okay it, well this is what, in my opinion, it was kind of like Saints Row. I don't have to do a mission. I can turn on the game and play for four hours without doing a single mission. Just walking around and doing shit. You know what I mean? Like blowing shit up. And it's just a lot of fun in that, in that movie. That's why I picked that game. I, I, well, you'll see when I do my review later. I am all about this Far Cry 3 game. I love it. I, I, I don't know what it is, man. It's just something about it. It's just a great game. But yeah. when, I, when we were discussing me and p about it you know the reason why all stars for me got it is because for me it felt a lot like those archaic type games like blur and stuff where it was it was challenging when you challenge someone else to race with you but at the same time it was a very big fun factor that Mm -hmm. you could laugh when you messed up you know you could sit there and keep going and try to push yourself to do better and and when you did you felt good about it so yeah yeah, so it was you would you you would be hard pressed to get frustrated at sonic all-stars racing yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna pick it up. Um, if you found yourself getting frustrated with Sonic All Stars Racing, you probably shouldn't be gaming at all. Mm-hmm. It also kind of remind me a little bit of uh, Joyride Turbo. Yeah, so that was that was another Joyride fun game. Turbo was a fun game. So. Yeah, uh, most overrated, Dark Siders Two. Now, we're not saying this game wasn't a good game. Yeah, because it, it was, was good. It was a good game. We're just saying maybe it didn't quite deserve all the praise it got. It yeah. was a big hype. It big, was. Big, there was big, a lot of hype with Dark Siders too, and I think, and there was a, there was a crap ton of glitches in it out the gate. Also, there's also one of the biggest issues with Dark Siders too, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about it because I couldn't quite figure out, put my finger what it was. The world doesn't feel alive enough. It's not. You're right. You when, do, when you're walking around, when you yeah. have such a massive world, and there's 15 enemies running around in it. Yeah, it doesn't feel right. Plus, there's. There's, there's not enough stuff. There's got to be more NPCs to interact with. There's, yeah, there's got to be stuff to find, hidden stuff. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't... Did, didn't feel quite alive at points. Yeah, yeah it did. It, just, it, it felt like they could have made the game a lot smaller and fit the same amount of stuff in it. 
Yeah. You know, it, it was a lot of filler. For a game that's all about stealing souls, it was lacking a little bit of soul itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, most underrated Resident Evil Opera uh, Operation Raccoon yeah. City. Critics commercially panned the shit out of this game. Critics were hating on Operation Raccoon City so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was actually a fun game to play. And I would challenge people, you know. Uh, and we actually had someone comment on our forums on RG Xbox who, who said that it should have got the most shit game of the year award. <laughs> so they didn't like it either. And maybe it was just me, but... Um, I thought it was. I thought it was fun to have a game that has multi stories like in one game. Yeah, you know, it was nice to sit there and and play as. It was a it was a different take <clears throat> having Resident Evil as a class based shooter, uh, and I would say I would even go as far to say is the multiplayer on there is funner than the multiplayer on Resident Evil Six. The campaigns aren't as, aren't as good, but the multiplayer was better. I yeah, think. yeah, most indubitably and biggest surprise, uh, definitely Sleeping Dogs. I agree with that too. That was a sleeper. Uh, this the, uh, this is a game that that was originally supposed to be uh, originally supposed to be true crime Hong Kong, yeah, then it got it canceled, was. and then Square picked it back up and uh, got it back on track, and they did a great job with it. Uh, if it wasn't for Dishonored, Sleeping Dogs would have got best new IP. I can agree with that. Um, now here we've got biggest comeback. Uh, now I know you would put Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Mine, in my opinion, was Final Fantasy. Um, I know Final Fantasy came out the year before, but because of Final Fantasy 13 not being as good, I thought that it was a nice comeback with 13 2. But to me, Tony Hawk got it because there hadn't been a hadn't good, been a Tony Hawk in a there long There hadn't time. been a good Tony Hawk in forever. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see why. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can see that. But I, Tony Hawk Shred, Tony Hawk Ride. They were terrible. They, they were terrible. Ride was awful. They were horrible. Awful. Awful. Uh, I mean, for for a while there, uh, Skate had taken the crown. Skate two and Skate three. Say like a mean it, you know. <laughs> Awful. Skate Skate yeah. still has the crown. Yeah. It, like, I mean, Skate's just the best skating game out right now. It is. It is. Uh, but the, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD was definitely a good, a good, a good game, and it was nice how they put one and two in a, into a game. Uh, the biggest disappointment by far. Call of Duty Black Ops. Ops declassified. Declassified. Not Black Ops two. No. Declassified. declassified. You hear about this game coming out for Vita, a brand new Call of Duty. Not it's not Black Ops Two; it's its own game. A lot of hype. You know, you're you're thinking this is going to be probably the best game for Vita. Comes out, ends up being the worst game for Vita. It's awful. It's awful. That was that was just unacceptable. Biggest disappointment. Now for the doo -doo -doo booger of the year. Now. Jay Ray thought this should have got Game of the Year, but me and Steve had to put him in check. Oh, get the hell out of here. We were like, come on, Jay. Get the this hell This ain't out Battlefield. <laughs> Can't keep putting water. Catherine as Booger of the Year, you know. <laughs> I, and believe me, I would put that game as Booger of the Year for a decade straight. Every year. <laughs> I, think, I think the only plus was, like, for me, the, the whole little anime movie type cinematics that's probably the only thing i liked about that whole game yeah yeah what well, medal of honor warfighter was pretty much a consensus booger of the it was year. horrible it was it was bad it was just bad it was horrible it was bad studio of the year 343 industries and that's because of what they did with halo yeah. and I, I would have to agree with put that. bungie to shame mm. Now, most anticipated retail title is... For this coming year. Yeah, Bioshock Infinite. I would say Tomb Raider's right there. Oh, right yeah, under Tomb it. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider's going to be awesome. Dead There's Space 3. Dead Space 3. Grand Gears Theft of Auto 5. Gears of War Judgment. There's a ton of them, but I would say Bioshock Infinite is probably the top of that list. Yeah. yeah. To me, I would say Tomb Raider. Huh, Tomb Raider for you? Yeah, yeah. Just, just because... Uh, Laura looks looks more like a real person that you would see day to day, mm -hmm. per se. And it's more of a... A, an emotional feel to the game than than the other ones were. Definitely, there's still a little bit of a puzzle to like, all right, well, what do I get? Where do I go? You know, how do I do this? But you feel like she's feeling during the the whole instance. Yeah, so. Tomb Raider is going to be awesome. They've definitely fun. brought Laura Croft to life, in and this she's one. cute, man. I mean, I know Laura Croft has always been hot, but I mean, to me, the cute factor is way better than hot because that more realisticness is where yeah. it's at. Yeah, she's definitely a lot more realistic. So the last category is most anticipated, anticipated arcade. arcade title, and uh, that would be Battlefield or Battle Block. Obviously, Taylor. the next game from the creators of Castle Crashers would have to be. Yeah. Oh yeah, the cave looks pretty awesome too. It does. I watched a video for that. That game looks like it's going to be fun. I know. But um, and then now I would the, the last thing is overall game of the year, all consoles, all titles, all all systems, just game of the year. 
Um, we didn't write this down, but probably would have to be Halo Four or Mass Effect Three for me. I think those are the two that. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm thinking Halo Four as well for overall game of the year. Yeah, I probably played that one the most. So yeah, I'll agree. Halo, it is. So. On to the news. Yep, that was the that was the awards. Uh, what did you guys think? You know, uh, if you have any opinions on uh, what were your favorite games of 2012, you know, feel free to hit us up at Frag Tag Radio on Twitter. On to the news. Uh, Microsoft has acquired R2 stu- uh, R2 Studios, which are they're a specialist in smart glass like home automation. Uh, they beat out both Apple and Google to to acquire this company. So evidently, they've got big things going on over yeah. there. So that's good. That, that, that's uh, that's definitely something that uh, you know is going to help them out in the future. Yeah, I, I think that's a good acquisition. Skype will replace Xbox Live Chat. And it's about time. Lord, yeah, it's about man. time. Thank man. the Lord. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, MSN App Messenger is being replaced by Skype, and so it seems Xbox will. So will Xbox Live yeah, Chat. Uh, now, how is that going to work? Skype and Live Messenger have been merged into one service. But Xbox Live Chat, how is that going to work? Xbox Live Chat? Yeah. Like voice chat? Yeah. The same way it would before. You just use Skype. So I'm not going to be able to use... I mean, uh, I don't know. It's, it's uh, Skype is going to be integrated the same way that it already is. Okay. It's going to be pretty much the same service, the, the same service, just, uh, just with the so name Skype able... on it. And video chat will be more integrated if you want it. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's good because, I, I, I mean, Connect Chat should be Skyped anyway. It should. Um, Microsoft uh, Illumerum's uh, uh, yeah. demo, free gaming... From its TV camera. Now, this thing looks awesome. Did you, did you see the video on this? No, I haven't. It's uh, something that... Oh, I did see this. Yes, with the lights and everything. It'll go like behind your TV. Yeah. And uh, now, some some of the uses for it didn't look so cool. Some of them looked great. Now, like, uh, an example of one that, that, that didn't look so great was that they have like a Call of Duty game on the screen. And like the... the the game was stretching beyond the screen onto the walls around it. So, like, you could see the buildings or whatever. But I could see that becoming more of a distraction yeah. than adding to the game, uh, playing in multiplayer or even campaign uh, in a first-person shooter like that. Yeah. Now, they also had uh, a kart, raider, uh, kart racer, which looked like the Sonic or Mario Kart or something, where it, 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 was, it was the game on the TV, but on the walls around you... Uh, With clouds and stuff? Yeah, you're like racing on like a snow level, and there's like snow falling down on the walls around you and stuff like that. Uh, small, subtle effects like that could add to the experience. It'd be cool. Uh, you know, it depends on the cost, of course. Right. But it could be like a new Rumble Pack was. You know? Yeah. It could take off like that. Uh, anything that pulls you into the experience of the game, I'm all for. Uh, now, you can sign up for the Battle Block Theater beta. Um, go yep. to thebehemoth.com. Slash beta. Slash beta. And uh, you can sign up right there. Uh, I actually already signed up, so I'm hoping to get into it. Doritos Crash Course City Lights DLC is on Xbox Live now. Doritos Crash Course came out a long time a ago. A long time ago, and it yeah. was a free game. Free game. So it's crazy yeah. how uh, the DLC is just coming out so long. But, hey, you have uh, a small studio. It's only 160 points, and uh, well, uh, Doritos Crash Course was made by one oh, person. That's right. Now, they won that award, didn't they? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Made by one person. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, you can get that for 160 points, a.k.a. two bucks. Uh, and I'm sure you have Crash Course. Everybody does. It's free. Uh, the Tomb Raider 360 controller is Rough Tumble Rumbles. Uh, mm. It's coming out in March, and it's just, you know, basically... This looks like a controller for the ladies. It's got, like, a, a pinkish tint to it. Yeah. So, ladies out there, if you've been looking for an official 360 controller but just haven't been able to find one yet, this could be the one for you. There it is. Uh, also, Tomb Raider also has their multiplayer confirmed, uh, yeah. which has been long rumored that it was going to have multiplayer. Uh, it's officially been confirmed. Now, and I, I don't know how I feel about that. Now, how is how uh, what kind of multiplayer is it? Supposedly, it's going to be just like your basic mo- multiplayer uh, with like I don't person know, shooting. Or yeah, like, it's going to be like I guess like a Max Payne type of deal. Yep, it's going to be that's a good comparison. It's going to be almost exactly like Max Payne, except for there's also going to be some uh, uh, gosh, what was it? I have no idea what you're about to say. <laughs> the uh, objective based games, uh, game right. modes and stuff. So that's kind of what it's going to be. 
Uh, well, well, like maybe a hybrid of Max Payne and Assassin's Creed multiplayer? Yeah, something like that. I mean, it, it, they haven't really gotten much into it, so we don't know too much about it yet. Uh, next headline is Microsoft Xbox 360 game pre-orders net you free 1,600 Microsoft points. Yep, so if uh, you're looking into pre-ordering some games and you'd like to get 1,600 Microsoft points with your pre-order, you might consider pre-ordering uh, your games through Microsoft's official store. Because if you pre-order, uh, it was a bunch of games too. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, Bioshock Infinite, Tomb Raider, Lost Planet Three, Metal Gear Rising, Crisis Three, Army of Two Devils Cartel, The New Tiger Woods, Dead Space Three, South Park: Stick of Truth. Pre-order any one of those games, and you will get sixteen hundred Microsoft points. What if I pre-order five of them? You can do it up to three. Uh, so you can pre-order three of those games and get three 1,600 Microsoft Point cards with your pre-orders. Interesting, interesting. So maybe I'll what have you could do. It's not a bad deal. Mm -hmm. not what at all. you could do, you could sit there. Use two separate and, cards. Yeah, you could sit there and have, or you could like pay a buddy to, to Order do three it. on this credit card, three on the other. Why not? Two or or uh, go down to Walmart and get one of those prepaid credit cards. Yeah, heck yeah. But would they... All right, let's just say... Uh, Lost Planet 3 actually looks pretty good. Let's too. say... Uh, Lost Planet 2 was good. Did you play it? If you did it two different separate transactions so that you could do this, would they just, would they like uh, not allow you to have 1,600 Microsoft points for the second transaction because it's going to the same person? Like, if you had someone Address. else... Yeah, you I see wanna... what I'm saying? Like, if you sat there and had your mom, you, you paid her to get the other three. It'd you be a different probably address, use, uh, different name. You, you see what I'm saying? You might be able to do it with a different name because, I mean, they've got to know that, you know, people live in the same house, but, you know, two people might have Xboxes and two people might be trying to pre-order the same game that happened to live together. I would hope that that would be the way of it anyway. Or do they deposit them straight to your gamer tag? And if they do that... Then you'd have to use two different gamer tags. Best case scenario, they would probably just email you the code. That's what I'm thinking. So, Two Human has been pulled from Xbox Live Marketplace. Who and really good cares? riddance, yeah. because really that game was garbage. I liked it a little bit. Yeah. You did? I, I, yeah, I, I bought it. I played a good deal of it. I didn't think it was too bad. I mean, it didn't it didn't retain my attention, but it's from P's favorite. It wasn't studio, it wasn't like Knights. it was the worst thing Knights. ever. He but. loves Silicon. Well, Knights. the reason I didn't like Two Human was because I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to Two Human, like I'm looking forward to Bioshock Infinite right now. I mean, mm. I was looking forward to Two Human. So I picked mine up as a used copy. I pre I pre ordered it and everything. I, I went to midnight release to get that game. I was excited. You were really excited for X-Men Destiny, too. No, I was not. <laughs> After Two Human, I said I'm never playing another Silicon Knights game ever again. <laughs> and uh, I actually uh, I played a little bit of X-Men Destiny just so I could talk about it on the show, but that only lasted for about two minutes. Serious Sam, Double D! Mm. Double D! Double XL Storms, Xbox Live Arcade on February 20th. All right, let's talk into the mic and not into the chair. I like the chair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's coming out on February, uh, February 20th for 10 bucks. Um, if you like Serious Sam, obviously you're going to download. I mean, Serious Sam is Serious Sam. It's going to be just like all the other Serious Sams. They're always the same. Just new levels, new guns, yada, yada. And me, I'm a big Serious Sam fan, so I probably will download it. But honestly, uh, I still haven't downloaded uh, Serious Sam 3 yet, so... I've got the first two on arcade. I haven't downloaded the third one yet, so I might, it might be a while before I get around to double D, double XL. Probably be a long time. Probably will. Skulls of the Shogun slices off a release date of January 30th. Which is not far away, and it's coming out on every Microsoft platform there is. It'll be out on, the, on your Windows 8 tablet, your PC, uh, your laptop, your Xbox, your Windows 8 phone. If it's made by Microsoft, Skulls of Shogun will be on it. Mm. All right, well... Scrolls of Shogun. Many ways to download. And that's going for uh, 1,200 Microsoft points, a.k.a. 15 bucks. Big things. Big things. Capcom Arcade Cabinet confirmed for the West. Um, now I'm guessing this is just uh, several Cap Capcom games. Yeah, it's a collection of a bunch of old Capcom games uh, together on uh, one retail disc for that ass. For that ass. <laughs> for that, for that wow. ass. Uh, now uh, we were talking about this the other day. Max Payne 3 Final DLC. Yep, and out. this one is not just going to be your old crappy multiplayer map pack. This one is actually going to have some co-op in it, which is why I will probably actually download this one. Yeah, they've had a lot of crap DLC packs come out. For Max Payne, mm -hmm. they, they have. Uh, this might be actually the only good one to come out for it. Yeah. Because this is the, they're saying this is going to be the final one, so. Yeah. You know, 
I would have liked two of them uh, to see them uh, make some kind of an expansion, a uh, single player expansion for Max Payne. You know how it goes these days. All these companies, it's just that multiplayer DLC. Well, well it's weird because Rockstar usually does. You know, know, uh, know. L.A. Noir, they have you know the, the extra episodes, Reefer Madness, and and, and all those. And then uh, Red Dead Redemption, you had the Undead Nightmare expansion. Grand Theft Auto Four, you had the Ballad of Gay Tony and. Uh, Lost in the Dance. I mean, so Rockstar usually does these expansions, and I'm just wondering why they didn't do it with Max Payne 3. Well, they were probably busy at Grand Theft Auto 5. I guess. Uh, that's the only excuse I'm going to accept. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Assassin's, uh, 3, uh, uh, Assassin's Creed 3, 3 gets yeah. the battle hardened multiplayer DLC now. Same, same situation here. Yep. Warrant multiplayer DLC. Um, Out now, and I'm not downloading it. Yeah, I, I actually did. And Cause, that's just because you're an Assassin's Creed that's, slave. That's true, too. And also, <laughs> I, I decided to just finally start playing the multiplayer of it quite a bit. And I started playing the multiplayer right before this dropped. So since I was playing it, I was like, well, hell, I'm going to download it. And I'll, it's just some more characters and, and uh, stages, you know, typical multiplayer DLC. And I, maps. I know you were upset that it was only 800 points. I know you were hoping to spend <laughs> at least 2,400 points on hoping. that map. I was hoping. Um, um, the new multiplayer characters are bundled in, namely the Governor, Highlander, Coyote Man. Um, obviously, there's obviously there's an Indian because he's on all the promotional pictures. Yeah, that's uh, Coyote Man. Uh, there's also Coyote the Man. stages are Charlestown, Fort St. Matthew, um, and St. Pierre. So it is what it is. It is. And they've had Lego uh, Batman and DC superheroes. Now they got Lego Marvel superheroes coming out this coming year. They're going to have Lego everything. It, coming out on. Um, I'm just waiting for Lego Ninja Turtles, damn it. Has anybody. The video game. All the Lego games are the same. But they're fun. They are fun. Every time. But they are the same thing. I mean, For some reason, it never gets old. DC Super Heroes 1 was probably the best one that I've played. Batman 2 DC Super Heroes? Yeah. That, that's because it was the first one to be open world. And that, Yeah, exactly. And I thought that was a good fit for it. But the Lord of the Rings one, which wasn't bad, was just the same thing we've always you seen. You played the Lord of the Rings yeah, one? Yeah. Because uh, I, I bought it for Solomon for Christmas, and it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I played it, but it's just the same thing. The puzzles are all the same. You well, know, yeah, I mean, after go, you've go done... Go here, hold the button to build it, and if everything builds. After you know, you've done 20 LEGO games, there's only, exactly, so, many, only, so, there's only so many puzzles. They're all the same there. puzzles and stuff. It, you know, it's it's still fun, though, every it time. Is, it is fun. It LEGO is fun. Tomb Raider, coming out near you. The kids love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist shoots for August 20th. Uh, this is going to be a good game. It is. It's going to be a good game. It's looking awesome. Uh, they also had some uh, retail-specific pre-order bundles that are coming out, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, orders from GameStop, Best Buy, and Amazon will snag you some bonus content. The Dead Coast co-op map, uh, the Upper Echelon echelon. Uh, echelon suit, and the Gold Sonar goggles, baby. Pre-orders from Uplay get determined exclusive bonus content. Undetermined exclusive bonus I didn't even content. know you could buy from Uplay. Uh, yeah, th I think it's new because I, I noticed that when I was on there. They got like their own origin type store uh, or something like yeah. EA is doing. Just go to you play like you would from a game. Uh, I don't own Far Cry 3. And then when you, you go. You can buy a game straight from your Xbox through that you play? No, it doesn't. It's through, through the you play app on, on, on the game? Yeah, but it doesn't download to your Xbox. They're just going to send them to you. Right, mail it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'll tell you another game that this this is a game I'm really, really, really looking forward to is Injustice Gods Among Us. And that's April 16th. Uh, and they also revealed a battle edition. Are you getting the battle edition? Um, With the fight stick? Are you getting it? I should have gotten the Mortal Kombat one. And I didn't. And I kicked myself for it. I'm going to go on Amazon. I want to find that one because that terminate, uh, tournament stick was really nicely made. The, the Mortal Kombat one? It yeah. It was awesome. It was uh, it, it like went over your whole lap. It wasn't just a little it had cheap storage inside. Thing. Yeah, it, it was it was actually made of real wood. You know, I mean, it, it, it was quality. and it had like a pad so you could yeah. sit it right on your lap and sit there and play it like that, and then you yeah. could flip it open and store stuff in it. It was yeah. awesome, and it sold out so quick. Yeah, Pre they stopped taking pre-orders for it, and you could not get it anywhere. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah, and then they came out and finally sold it separately for like 150 bucks or something. Yeah. Now, but, I, I was told by someone else that they had gone through like two of them and then like because they had kept breaking them. Like the now, joystick yeah. wasn't made there, right. There was, th th there, were, there was two versions. <laughs> yeah, there was that, a cheap that, 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 Mortal, that Mortal Kombat had. They had the official arcade cabinet version, which is the one we're talking about. Yeah. And they had another one, which was uh, the more traditional, that was more like a controller made of plastic. See, I think that's what he's talking about because he wouldn't have been able to go through two. 
without spending a ton of money. Well, he, he, he played with one. And then turned that back in, and they were like, "All right, well, we'll just get you another one." Replace it. It must have gotcha. been the plastic one. Yeah, it had because... to because it would have been. I mean, you couldn't find this stick nowhere. I, and I believe me, I tried. You'd have been hard pressed to uh, to break the tournament one because I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. It was made of solid wood. Yeah, I mean, heavy, heavy. You know, like yeah, uh, why would you want that on your lap? Because it had a little pad under it. It all depends on how hardcore you are about your fighters. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to sit there and be pressing down on some hard wood on my wood. You know, that may be kind of some bad business yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? No, wood on wood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want no wood on wood action. <laughs> but, so, sure. but yeah, duh, Injustice is looking awesome. And uh, also, the Collector's Edition costs one forty nine ninety nine. Uh, what, and uh, what does that come with? No, I'm sorry. The, the Battle Edition costs one forty nine ninety nine. That is not... The collector's edition. The collector's edition uh, comes with uh, some DLC skins for Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, I believe. Right. Uh, the new 52 revamp, among other features, the fight stick. Okay, I guess that's just a fight stick. It doesn't really announce. It doesn't really say here what the collector's edition comes with. So it's just, it's just talking about the battle edition. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing that the Collector's Edition comes with everything the Battle Edition does, minus yeah. the stick. It comes with uh, three DLC skins uh, for Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, yeah. uh, just as they are in the old DC comics. And that's all I saw there. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, among other features, the Fight Stick offers adjustable illumination uh, for the joystick and buttons, just in case uh, you're playing at nighttime and you need those buttons. That was up. the other thing about... The arcade stick. Remember, you could take the buttons out of the bottom and rearrange them the way you want it. Yeah, yeah. Forgot yeah. about that. That was cool. That was really cool. But they didn't light up like this one. No, they didn't light up. It's a whole new thing. Whole new thing. Yeah. So you got sense. that Mortal Kombat stick. Make sure you get this one too, because this one lights yeah, up. Make sure so. them buttons glow. Hell yeah! Dead Island's Riptide Rigor Mortis Edition has a case of zombies. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew that was happening? Uh, the Rigor Mortis Edition has everything you'll need to survive, and it comes with a. Uh, it, everything comes inside of an actual small suitcase. Uh, you will get a zombie hula girl figurine, a bottle oh. opener that looks like a hand, oh. and also a key. Uh, there's also a digital strategy map and bundled DLC for the game, uh, and that'll set you back eighty bucks. Oh, it got me at that. The, that, uh, the hula figurine. girl, <laughs> zombie hula girl figurine. Uh, I knew you wanted that. Man, I tell you, if one of y'all get that game, because you know about me and Zombie Island. Check. Or, Z- Island. Zombie chicks. Yeah, you love now, some zombie chicks. I didn't like the first Dead Island, so I, you know, I might might be like, hey, P, get that uh that edition, and let me get that. It's figurine. fun, just not by yourself. Yeah, yeah. not not at all. By Pretty yourself. much what my roommate agrees about too. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. And I've told you, he is an absolute Dead Island fanatic. Yeah, you said that he played it like nonstop all day, every day. Fanatic. Be- I'm talking about beating the game four or five times fanatic. Really? Yes. I mean, he, he, he I, I, I can't even begin to tell you how much he loved that his, game. His game of the year, huh? He, <laughs> he had every, I, I swear he had every weapon that that game made stored away in his game. Every single weapon in that game. I, I mean, I've never seen somebody play a game so much, you know, um... But, and then look, and then, I mean, with all these games that are out now, he'll trade in Black Ops 2 before he'll trade in Dead Island. Still. Really? To this day. And he plays Black Ops 2 all the time. Yeah. But he will trade that puppy in before he, t- he trades in Dead Island. I can promise you that. That just has a laser <laughs> burn in it. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be at midnight release for that rip time. Yeah, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Um, here's some, some really interesting news. Uh, season 2 for Walking Dead has all but been confirmed. Yep. I mean, it, it's coming. And word on the street is your save file will carry over. Yeah, that's the word. Love uh, it. That's the word. And I can't wait, baby. I can't wait. I'd like to see them take the girl and make her badass now. Hopefully, all grown up. Hopefully your decisions actually impact the, the second game a little bit. And, and, and they're not just imported for no reason. Like <clears throat> Dragon Age 2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or even Mass Effect Three, where they're where 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 you're you're, you're going to get the same three endings, no matter what you did in the first two games. Yeah, but at, at least they they mattered as far as what characters were in the game and what weren't. You know, this, to some degree, they did matter. It just didn't matter for the ending. No, not for the ending. It did, but it, it, it did matter for how the game played to the. Walking ending. Dead season one was the same way. You're going to get pretty much the same ending, no matter what. Very, very close. You're right. 
No matter who you pissed off along the way, no matter how many, no, no matter how many balls you buffed and tried to keep everybody in your party, even if you did that. Hey, believe me, you had to do some ball buffing game. up in that game. Yeah, you did, especially for what's his face with Kenny. the swivel. Well, yeah, you had to, you had to buff that, but that, that boy's balls to a mirror shine, <laughs> or he was pissed at you. If you weren't buffing his balls constantly, he was upset. If I had to do it over again, I'd tell him to go freak himself. I would too. To go f himself. Yeah. I'm tired of you, Kenny. So, Arkham Universe, 14 more brilliant Batman domains registered. Now, there, there's a couple rumors as far as this goes. They had a lot of domains that they that they pretty much went out yeah. and got and registered. And people aren't quite sure right now if they're going to make a movie, because they're talking about maybe making a movie in the Arkham world, or if it's going to be the next game in the series. So... We'll have to see, you know, where this goes. If they made another movie, they just finished with a Batman I trilogy. Agree. I wholeheartedly agree, but that is a rumor right now. Is that they're going to? It wouldn't surprise me. I no, mean, me they had just finished a whole bunch of Spider-Man movies, and, and now they're compl- completely rebooting that. Same, you know, same thing with Superman. Really, you yeah. know, now they get the Man of Steel one. Yeah, well, there there hadn't been a good Superman movie in a while. It wasn't too long ago that the one with uh, what's his face came out the the, the new Supermans. This Christopher Nolan one is going to blow him out of the water. Oh, absolutely, because Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan is the best when it comes to superhero movies. But they didn't, yeah. not long ago, make some Batman movies, you know. Yeah. Um, Dead Rising 3, uh, unfortunately, got spotted on Blur Animation Studio resume. Uh, let's hope that this <laughs> game never sees the light of day. and that they Or just it. hope that it's actually playable better than Dead Rising 2, because Dead Rising 2 was unforgivable. Awful. It was. It was a, well, you talk about a game that I just could not, no matter how hard I tried to play. Yeah. Dead Rising 3. They should have had two, a... Two. When, uh, when they came out with, with, with the off-the-record edition and it had sandbox mode, that should have been in there from the beginning. Because the whole fun of that game is running around, cr- uh, crafting weapons and killing zombies and just, just having fun. Whereas the, the the whole missions being timed and the difficulty level just took just sucked all the fun out of that all game. Fun. That was the one where you had to get Zombrex for the little girl. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the one. It, that's exactly what. And and I was I will never th- get that, that little girl. That was another thing again. that sucked the fun out of the game. <laughs> that chick needed Zombrex every quote unquote twenty four hours, and if you didn't find Zombrex, you had to pay like twenty five thousand dollars. To, uh, for, 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 for one of those little doses of Zombrex. And it is hard to get $1,000 in Dead Rising, much less 25000 or however much it cost. I would have to go into a casino and bust open uh, slot machines for like three hours real time to get that much money. Achievements confirm for Resident Evil Revelations Unveiled Edition for 360. This is, I mean, this is pretty much given. It's coming out. Yeah, we've all known that. And but uh, from what I hear, this is this this is the best Resident Evil in a long time, probably even better than Resident it, Evil it, Six. It was very 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 good. It was the best mobile game probably that came out last year for DS. Yeah, yeah. not so mobile game. Up. I'm definitely and uh, word on the street is it's got a thousand gamer score, so it's gonna, you know it's gonna probably gonna be a games on demand title. It got insane reviews. I will be downloading it next. Like, Skyrim DLC will. I'm most a Resident like- Evil fan anyway, so I probably would have downloaded it. Next, next Skyrim DLC <laughs> will most likely be Red Guard, and uh, this was kind of uh, came out to light the same way some of the other packs that came out. Yeah, and, trademarking. You know, Red Guard is uh, a race. Red, Red Guard refers to a race of warriors in the Elder Scrolls universe yep. who were previously uh, the title of an Elder Scrolls adventure game back in 1998. They're the dark ones. They're they're the brownish color guys. Yeah. So those brown guys, damn it. Yeah, they're, they're like a light brown. <laughs> you know, so they're, uh, they, you know, they are definitely, when I, I want to know if you're going to go to another world. That's what I want to know. Is it going to be like Dragon Ball where it's a whole other map because that was absolutely awesome? Yeah. Or is it going to be like Dawn Guard where they just kind of put a little new points on the map that's already there, you know? So we'll see. That we will. And Gears of War Judgment got some pre-order perks for that ass. I'm surprised this wasn't number one news. Uh, I save all the best news for the last. <laughs> That's why we're talking about Resident Evil, Gears of War, all at one time. Saving the good stuff for last. I see Halo 4. Yeah, I, I see oh, that. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Uh, By the way, he, he had, he's had some news that he was so excited about for the last two weeks, and then now it doesn't look like it's what we thought. Oh, no. It's, it's on here. 
Uh, oh, you got to put it on here? Oh, it's it on here. It sucks, though, but it's... I mean, I guess it'll still be cool, but it's not what we thought. It's not? It's a TV show. What? Uh, Fallout? Yeah, it's a TV show. Who said that? It's... I mean, nobody... It's not confirmed yet, but everybody's pretty much saying it's a TV show now. No. And, and and Three Dog has been recording for a new Fallout TV series. No. It would make a good thriller. It would make a good TV series, but I was kind of hoping it that's would a, be no, a that, 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 that's, that, that, that's some BS. It's not true. It's all over the place on it, the internet. It, they're, they're hurting for new ideas for TV. That's, that's rumors. No, it, it, they, this is something that's almost guaranteed. Like No. I can almost... No. They, they know for a fact that he has been recording for a TV show. Speaking of which, we'll go ahead and say that news. Fallout 4, uh, Three Dog tweeted, Bow Wow Wow, looks like you'll be seeing some more Three Dog soon. Everybody went rampant thinking that meant Fallout 4. It does. And now it's come out just in the last couple days that there's probably, well, they know he's been recording for a Fallout TV series, and they think that's what he's been talking about. Because all he says is, looks like you'll be seeing some more the Three Dogs. The next Bethesda thing. game is going to be Fallout 4. I agree with you. And but Three Dogs is probably going to be in it. We hope, we hope so, so, and it does He's seem like Fallout that 4. way, but he has been recording over the last couple think weeks for it, a think TV about it. series. Bethesda gave him permission. Yeah, to, to, to promote this to, TV to, series. To, to, no, no, no. You wouldn't need permission well, look, to, all to I'm promote s- a TV series. All I'm saying People is... People don't keep TV series top secret. All I'm saying is, yes, this is secret so far. They haven't announced Video it. Games you but they have been recording for this TV series for the last couple of weeks. Right during the same time period that 3Dog tweeted that. I, I, I would even go as far as to bet you that this TV series, quote unquote, if it, if it even is real, doesn't even see the light of day. It may, it may not. You know, who knows? How, but, ma- how many video games ha- ha- have we heard that was going to be a TV series yeah, or a movie quite and a nothing ever happened It probably it. won't even, see the light Even your blockbuster, blockbuster games like Call of Duty, Halo, and Gears of War yeah. haven't seen a movie yet. It might not ever see the light of day. But, I mean, it was all over Joystick and IGN. I think it was like yesterday or the day before they were saying, you know. It, it was probably a slow news week. They didn't have much else to talk about. That's that's. I know how much you want this to be Fallout that's what, Four. That's when they start too. posting speculation. I, I want it to be Fallout Four too. Fallout Four, and nothing else matters. <laughs> nothing else matters. But I, I, screw I'm, every game that's coming out in 2013. <clears throat> Fallout Four is all that matters. I mean, it, it. I hope it's Fallout Four too, but it doesn't look like that's what it is. Don't you At say, least don't, do yet, not anyway. say that again. <laughs> do not say it doesn't look like. I knew that was gonna break your heart. When I said that. It's not true. It's I, not true. I don't know. I could see it as something that they would pit up against uh, the Walking Dead. You know, something that they they, they could probably see. It as, <coughs> All right. Well, it's been out for a couple seasons. Maybe the zombie craze is going to go down a little bit. We need to find something to bring ratings up. And this is like a post-apocalyptic. And, and those type of things are big appeasers to a lot of people. Could be a web series. Could, could be, be a web series. Could be like, uh, you know, who knows what it... Could even be a TV series to go along with a game release. Could be a web series. I'll give it that. Could be a game... But, but this is supposed to be big budget. Like more. It could be like Halo did to pro, promote Halo 4. What they did with Master Chief and the... Uh, you know, with the... the uh, what was the name of it? The the the, the Halo Ford on Halo Ford unto dawn. Ford unto dawn could be like that, but all they know is that this itself is definitely uh, that he's been recording for a TV show. Could go along with the game. They don't know, you know. But there's nothing about that says it's going to be a game yet, but it could be something like Ford on the Dawn. I hate to say it, Pete, but I'll be on J Ray side this time. I, I would look forward to something like that. Well, I hope it's a game. To be quite honest yeah. with you, I want I, it to be I a hope game. it's the game. Yeah, I, I'd like to see a TV series too, though. I'd like if to if both, it was a TV you know? series, I'd watch it, but I'd a thousand times more rather have the game. But you know what? Who cares? It's going to be awesome, whatever it is, because it's Fallout. But I can see what you're saying. Walking Dead, a post-apocalyptic, you know, I think that could make a good TV series. I think it really could. And there's so there's so much story behind it that they could stretch that out for quite a while. But P's right though in the fact that same way they did last time, they came out with Oblivion, and then they used that engine to make Fallout Three. You know, now they've come out Skyrim, they could easily use that engine to make Fallout Four. You know, and they're going to do it. Yeah, I hope so. But here's another thing that they were saying in the article: Three Dog. Might not be in Fallout 4 if they have it, because they might choose a different time setting. You know, for Three Dog to be in it, they'd have to choose the same time setting and same location. Well, Fallout is traditionally always, always in, 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 in DC. Yeah. yeah, the Capital Wasteland. I know. But 
they're they would still have to do it in the same time frame right to do that too which would mean you know that was a pretty big story that you were involved in right you know they'd have to find another way to, to do it it either have to be a continuum or something fresh continuum would be good for me yeah or some you know i, I don't care what it is i'd like to see as long as it's fallout 4 yeah I'm all over it. Anyway, let's get back on track here. Go back to the, the to the judgment pre order. Yeah, uh, if you uh, pre order from Electra, uh, EB Games in Canada, you'll get the the Hammer Burst and the Alex Brand skin. If you pre order from GameStop, you get the Young Marcus skin and the classic Hammer Burst. Uh, and if you order from I think Amazon, you get uh, the Young the Young Dom skin. And then I think there's a Best Buy or somebody who's got it's got the young uh, Cole. Well, is it with gears always with these young somebody skins? Always got to be a gun. always got them retailer specific pre order bonuses. I hate them, man. I hate retailer specific bonuses. You know, uh, Halo Four Dev on multiplayer updates and next gen. This week's blog post on Halo Waypoint is all about the future of Halo. As 343 franchise developer director Frank O'Connor speaks candidly about the success and failures of Halo 4. The developer is learning from itself. We made a lot of mistakes, and there are tons of things that we wish we had done better. Uh, features that didn't make it into the final game and glitches that emerged. Missteps made, DLC fiascos, and communication break breakdowns. If you just listen to that, you'd think that Halo 4 was terrible. Yeah. The way he made it sound. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there were things that went astonishingly well, as we all know. But anyway, what they're they're, they're talking about, obviously, the new Spartan Ops and the updates that are coming out. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, we know Monday that season six, or episode six, is coming out of season one. Uh, five new missions accompanying a new CG cinematic, just like all the other. The Forge Test Playlist, which uh, I know is going to be some Forge maps that they're doing. It's going to be a specific playlist for that, which will be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, a rotational hopper featuring small Forge maps, such as Relay. Uh, help us test these maps by providing feedback and reporting bugs that will assist in getting them ready for matchmaking. Uh, there will also be specializations, Pioneer and Pathfinder available for everybody, the people that did not get them early. Yep. Uh, the 28th will have Episode 7 and the Stalker and Engineer specializations. It will also have the Griff Ball playlist. Looking forward to that. Yeah, that will be pretty cool. Because uh, uh, when Halo first came out, I was under the impression that Griffball was going to already be there, ready to go, and it wasn't. I know. it's You can play it in private games, but that's it, yeah. which yeah. sucks. Uh, the next week after that will, of course, be Episode 8, Team Doubles Playlist, and the Rogue and Tracker Specializations. Uh, the, mess, the Majestic Map Pack also arrives February 25th. Um, so we'll see a title update around that time too, which I'm imagine is gonna you know update tons of stuff throughout the game. Most of the Halo up title updates in the past have been massive. Yeah, they have. You know, so I'm sure it'll be no different this time. Yeah, even though it's a new studio, they haven't done a title update. I don't think since the first week, have they? Mm -mm. So, yep. Um, all right, and uh, so looking forward to playing those new Spartan Ops missions. Like I said, the new episode, episode six, coming out in just a couple of days. By the time you hear this, it'll be out. Uh, and then moving on is the Black, Black Ops 2 Revolution hits January 29th, and it comes with a new weapon called the Peacekeeper. Yeah, which I hope that gun is balanced for Treyarch's sake. Well, here's the if thing. If it's not, people who don't have the DLC are going to be upset. Well, it's going to be just like they did in the other. You're not If you don't have the DLC, you won't play up against anybody who does have the DLC and that has that weapon, just like the maps. There'll be a playlist right. on that map. But... That's that's what I that's from everything I've read. That's how they're going to do it. That way, that it, the, it doesn't give you a gun, competitive though, edge. The gun, though, you can still use that uh, in other uh, playlists. Yeah, but you'll only be pitted up against people that have that DLC that have the ability to use that gun too. Even if you're not using them on the new maps. Yeah, I, I hope that's how. It works that, that's out. from everything I've read. That's how it's going to do. Now, for people that don't know, the Peacekeeper is actually a combination a submachine hybrid, gun, uh, yeah, combination yeah, assault, assault rifle. rifle. So it's kind of a, a tweener. That, best of both worlds. They call them, uh, you know, PDWs, personal defense weapons. That's uh, they they were big in Modern Warfare Three. Yeah. Um, also, the uh, the new multiplayer mode for zombies, where you finally get to play as the zombies. Yep, that's going to be sweet. Um, and the new zombie map, uh, map Die Rise. Die Rise. It's a freaking Skyrise tower, 
and it's been like ravaged by war. You can you can tell that just by looking at it. It's in, like the old Black Ops one in, in the video. But it looks awesome because you can go from the bottom of the building all the way up to the top, and it's so destroyed that uh, at some parts you can't even tell which way is up, which way is down. It's crazy looking. Yeah, I think that'll be um, pretty cool. Um, it looks great. There's also Mirage. The Gobi Desert multiplayer map utilizes sand dunes to provide different levels of elevation and sanctuary. Grind, in the, the one in the skate park. That That's, looks awesome. And now, I, I saw a video on Grind where, for the first time in any Call of Duty... There's round edges. Yeah, well, there has to be round. Right, that's and they thought they were trying to figure out a way that they could make a map with round edges, and it made sense to make a skate park part to do it because yeah. everything's obviously rounded in a skate park. Yeah. And they were saying that you almost have to change the way you play when going around a corner because yeah. there's not that sharp edge. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's going to be in Venice, that's, California. That's the map I'm most looking forward to. Uh, downhill is your first snow map in this game. That one looks hard. Right, yeah. Hydro is the other one I'm looking forward Yo, to. Dam and water to advantage your block. Now, there's also there's places where water can get you in hydro, and there's places where ski lifts can get you in downhill. Yeah. So, uh, you know. It's nice that they're finally making the maps interactive now because, I mean, Gear, uh, Gears of War has been doing that for years. Yeah. <clears throat> since Gears Call of War 2. Call of Duty's not been known for their interactive stuff, like, you know. The as far as maps go, yeah. Maps, you know, and, and, and even, you know. It's about time they hopped on that train, though. It definitely is. And then Fallout 4 better be coming out. We already talked about that. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Alan Wake creator Remedy has te is teasing great news in 2013. And they accompanied that with a quote that sounded a lot like some Alan Wake ish to me. So I'm guessing <laughs> Alan Wake, Big Al, the <laughs> Wake Meister. <laughs> it's going to come out. Making a it's return. It's going to come out tomorrow that they're coming out with an Alan Wake TV series. And that's what they were talking about. Y'all <laughs> are on crack. And Pete, yeah. and Pete's going to be so sad because the two games he got so excited for yeah. are all of a sudden going to be TV Alan series. Wake, nothing else matters. <laughs> Except Alan for Wake. Fallout 4. Yeah. So they both matter. Unless Alan Wake gets announced and then Fallout doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> Man. So, uh, right now on the pedestal. Yeah. We yeah. are looking forward to more news on this. Definitely, definitely. And uh, speaking of uh, Alan Wake... Uh, IGN's Ryan McCaffrey put out uh, 10 bold predictions uh, for Xbox in 2013, and I, I thought they were interesting, so I thought we would go ahead and share his predictions. He's saying that uh, State of Decay and Loco, Sci uh, uh, Loco Cycle are going to be the games to have on Summer of Arcade this coming year. I tend to agree with that. Uh, what is State of Decay? I've heard it, but I don't know what it is. It's a zombie game. I, I mean, I figured that from State of Decay, but like, what, what kind of game? Uh, I mean, it's hard. It's, like any other zombie game, shooting. Zombie shooting. Zombie. Well, there's Deadlight, there's Walking Dead, it's, and it's, then there's first person. Well, it's not like it's, it's not like Walking Dead, but uh, you, you you do talk to people and interact with people. It's not like Deadlight. It's uh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, Loco it's, a cycle, game, it's a hard game to describe. All the videos that I've seen on Loco Cycle, and I watched a lot of them. Uh, Look oh, insane. It does, dude. It's like a fighting game and a racing game put in one. Like, what the heck? Like, you're a motorcycle, and you're racing. You pat Instead of just passing somebody, you stop and start kicking and punching, and, and it, it turns into, like, a little battle, and then, boom, you're back into a bike and racing again. It is nuts. Twisted Pixel always delivers the goods. They do. Twisted Pixel delivers the goodies. There was a game on Game Gear that it was a, it was a motorcycle racing game. That you could beat somebody. Road Rash. Some, road Rash. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Man, that was a good time. I'm sitting there yeah, when classic. you're describing that. I'm like, it sounds like Road Rash. Now, this is, the, the the motorcycle is almost like a transformer when it happens, though. The motorcycle turns into, like, starts throwing... The, the motorcycle itself, not the guy on it. The motorcycle turns into, like, a transformer, starts kicking and punching and doing all these special moves and then turns back into a motorcycle. Does it get the sound, too? The... <laughs> now here's one that I've been waiting to hear about for a long time. Oh. Shadow Complex 2 finally being announced okay. and as a next gen Xbox arcade. Shadow exclusive. Complex 2. I had I have some news on this, believe it or not. And I don't know if you're gonna like it, and it's not confirmed. It, it, it's just another rumor. Yeah. But they say that Shadow Complex 2 will come out this year, but it will be a mobile exclusive. That's not true. It's just a rumor. We don't. Nobody knows if it's true or not, but that, that's a rumor. And you know how rumors can be true or false. You never know with them. But they do say that they're working on it and that Shadow... Because you know that, that they do make... Big, Epic is big in the mobile scene now. You know, so it does kind of... I can see it, but why wouldn't they release it? I'm going to be pissed if it only comes out on mobile. It's not. 
I, I, would, be, I, would, I would be surprised if it even comes out on mobile. Where the hell are you hearing these horrible rumors? They're from the major outlets. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not possible. No, that, it, it does. Uh-huh. <laughs> if I don't like it, it's not possible. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope it's not true, too. It's not. But I could definitely see it. I'll bet my left nut, nut on it. Whoa. And you know what that means. Whoa. That means it would only come out on iOS too if it's Epic, from yeah. what you told me earlier, which would well, push yeah. it off even more. Well, yeah, they're definitely Epic's not putting any mobile games out on Android. Um, go ahead with number three. They might put it out on Windows Phone though. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, there you go. Said uh, next generation Xbox will be publicly announced at a special event uh, one month <coughs> prior to E3 in June, and uh, a lot of people are saying that Sony's probably going to go the same route with the PlayStation Four. It probably will. They're going to want to have their own separate press conferences so they can spend as much for time. the new consoles yep. to really, you know, shed some light on them. And that's and that's I, I agree and with give that. them the spotlight they deserve. I agree with that. Uh, Microsoft will take a page from the Apple playbook and officially call the next-gen Xbox simply Xbox. This has been rumored. Not 720, not Durango, not Xbox Infinity, not X, <coughs> not, not Xbox these nuts. Well, Dur- just Durango is just a code name anyway. Right, we yeah, know it is. going to be called Durango. Well, you, you, you'll be surprised how many people on Facebook think the, think the name of the next Xbox is Durango. I argue with people about it all the time. That's just stupid. I wouldn't mind uh, being called 720 or Infinity. You know, that'd be Infinity really, would be cool, but really I, I nice like. Name. I think just call it just the Xbox. new Xbox. The new Xbox. It just sounds clean and cool. Yeah, I like that. The new Xbox because that's what you say with the iPad now. They don't number the iPad. You just say the new iPad. Right. You know because it is an iPad. Like how many iPods have come out over the years? Do we say, hey, I'm going to go get that iPod 22? Right. You know, no, because it's just, it's an iPod. Right. Now there's all now now people say the iPod Touch, but even the iPod Touch has had five of them released since then, but it's still an iPod Touch. You know, and I like that. I think that's clean and sleek. I'd rather yeah. I'd rather to be something to distinguish between everything because you have the original Xbox, you have the Xbox 360, and you have the have Xbox the 360 Xbox. Slim, then you have the new Xbox, and, yeah, and then they're gonna be like you go up there and be like, I want I want a new Xbox. They're gonna be like, which one do you want? And what we got left of the Slims, you want 360, you would call 360, and the new one you would just call Xbox. Mm-hmm. I think. I think that's how that works. And work. you know what else, too? This, this is the other thing. Cause it, that's how I would think. This is the other thing. I think with this next generation of consoles, we are actually going to see the end of new consoles. And what I mean by that is, just like PCs, you're going to have an Xbox, okay? And then maybe five years from now, Xbox will come out with another Xbox. They'll just have some geared up geared up, you know, internal CPU and stuff, but it won't, they won't, it'll run the same type of games. And those games will still play on both Xboxes, but it'll, it'll be more like a computer. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's what we're going to end up be more seeing. more like upgrading. This will be the last time we see a whole new console, Launch. in my opinion. You right. know, because I think it's just going to kind of upgrade and, and change and evolve like PCs from now on. And, uh... They're saying our uh, the next Xbox will most likely retail for around uh, around four hundred for the Pro model and three fifty for the uh, arcade edition if there if there were to be one. Uh, new Xbox will be released in November and kick serious ass on the tech bench and at retail stores. I don't, I don't doubt that. Now, Bungie's new game, Destiny, will be Microsoft's E3 press conference headliner as an exclusive for the new Xbox. Uh, that's that. I have no doubt about that because uh, Microsoft and, and and Bungie have an agreement where their new game Destiny has to be exclusive on Microsoft system for at least a year. Yeah. Now, oh, by the way, we should we should note that these are predictions. Yeah, these are all predictions. These are not news. These aren't rumors. Some of them have been rumors, but yeah. these are just predictions. So let's make that very clear, so somebody doesn't come out and say, "What you said, Destiny was going to headline a new Xbox." You know what I mean? Yeah. If it doesn't, so uh, both Xbox 360 and the new Xbox versions of Destiny. Oh, uh, so, so they're saying that Destiny is going to come out on 360 and the new Xbox. Sort of like how uh, Zelda Twilight Princess did on GameCube and the Wii at the same time. So uh, It'll be the same game, but it'll come out on both consoles. So that way Bungie can maximize their profits because 360 already has an install base of however many million people and the new Xbox will have a small install base to start out with. So they're going to want to keep still have, be able to sell those copies and that will allow them to do that. Uh, meanwhile, Alan Wake 2 and Forza Motorsport 5 will be uh, Microsoft's other big first party uh, titled for the new Xbox, Big Al. And Harmonix uh, is working on a, uh, well, and then and this part is sort of confirmed. Harmonix is working on a new game and it's not a music game. 
and it's supposedly for Connect. And they're guessing that this is also going to be part of the, the new Xbox's launch, which would not surprise me at all. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can see myself living in a cardboard box with an electrical hookup, a small TV, just so I could have that new the new Xbox system so I can play on the highest graphics possible. Put you a tent. Pete did that before. Remember your tent you had years back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was living in a tent for a while. This was years Some months. ago. Years yeah. ago. Yeah, but he had made sure he had all his electronics hooked up in that place. Yeah, I had, I had my TV <laughs> hooked up in there, the, the original Xbox. Had it going on up in that piece. <laughs> that was a long time ago, though. Yeah, it was. That was, a, nice that was generator. <laughs> right, right after the Muse, I think. Do you have internet out there? Don't think I had internet. Ooh. But the original Xbox wasn't a lot of, you know, unless I was going online to play Unreal or something. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as big of a deal as it is now with a 360. I would have to have internet. Mm-hmm. Internet is or, it just, or it just wouldn't be the same. Um, so yeah, that's it for the news. And now it is time for Steve-O's Ultimate Breakfast Buffet, where he is going to give his opinions on uh, Star Wars. The Old Republic has now gone free to play. Uh, we've played it a little bit here and there. Uh, opinions on that. And also uh, your review on the Mist of Pandaria expansion. Yeah, I don't know how big of a buffet it is. It's kind of like a snack table, but, you know. <laughs> um, Star Wars, uh, I have to say, they, and I've, I've seen multiple videos from multiple different people, and that, you know, when it first came out, they said it was going to be the WoW killer. It is still labeled the supposed WoW killer. Um, I have to say that in certain aspects, I could see that. Right. With it being free to play, they're going to bring in a lot of people. And they brought me and P back in. P was kind of not too great on that because two minuses already won. It's Star Wars, not Star Trek, which I apparently got those messed up. I was like, hey, P, it's Star Wars. He goes, no, dude, it's not Star Trek. You make it Star Trek, I'll be that much more hyped about it. Oh, yeah. Um, And then second, it's an MMO. And he's not big on MMOs. But for me, trying to describe to him how awesome this game was, and it is, it just... Me being a hardcore fantasy player, that's why WoW and I have stronger ties, uh, is why I play more WoW than I do Star Wars. But Steve, see, you would like Game of Thrones. You need to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> you, he would, because that's his type of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would. Yeah, no, that, Steve, you would. You, you need lots to of that. lots of uh, hot naked chicks. You'd love it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for for Star Wars, I gotta Star say, Wars, I love the fact that you can you can choose your your light, dark, or neutral uh, comments when you're picking up or yeah. delivering your quests. Um, Conversation like, trees, pretty much just like the Mass Effect ones. Exactly. Yeah. I like the fact that everything is... It's a plus and it's a downfall. That everything's cinematic. Uh, I was uh, at a point where I had to redo a quest because I wasn't quite sure what was going on. So I like in WoW, you can abandon the quest and then re-pick up the quest from the same person that you had picked it up from. Because I thought I had like a little glitch where it wasn't producing what I needed. Right. And uh, it was just a pain because you couldn't get out of those cinematics. You couldn't just skip the cinematics, get to your quest, and go. It was just the same thing. And then you, ha- on top of that, had to pick your same choices that you did while getting that that quest. Right. Uh, but I, I think for an interactive point, it does a lot better than WoW. It's not a lot of text. It's not a lot of this. You feel like you are your character. Right, um, yeah. But uh, with the free-to-play, you get two characters per server. There's only a handful of servers on the, the U.S. side. Um, I noticed that it is very taxing on a system, so a newer newer gen computer would probably run it fine. Mine is quite old, uh, so, I mean, back since I was about to jump into college, so it's, it's quite old. Um, but it, it runs it okay, um, but I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, so, uh, if you want to upgrade things, like if you want to purchase another race to play, uh, if you want to purchase different types of things, you can do that, and it'll it'll say it's kind of like a it's any like any other free to play. It'll have their currency, and it'll tell you for your for um, uh, your country's currency is what it is equivalent to the game's currency. So ten dollars will be X amount of credits. Yeah. So. Um, you know, and that's fine by me because I jumped thirty, forty dollars into Happy Wars, no problem. Still love the game, and I'm happy with it. 
Uh, so that's it about that. You're um, happy? Well, thank I, you. I'm Lord. happy with that. I even labeled, <laughs> I even labeled my, my character in Star Wars because I could not get my character name right because it, it was always taken. I even put FTR Stevo, yep. and it took. So if you see FTR Stevo well, on an Star Eastern Wars. server, you know it's me. You know who it is. Uh, just like if you see Pradius because Jeff said he had to make sure he had that unlock. Yeah. So uh, now Definitely. for... For a while, Mr. Pandaria, to be honest with you, I zip zoomed and fly to 90 as quick as I could. And to be honest with you, when you hit 90 and you're able to do those scenarios and you're able to do other things, it is a great game. Uh, I, Like I said, I didn't really pay too much attention to the storyline because my guild was already having 90s and wanted to do some things. And they're slowly starting to pick back up with their numbers um, but the one thing that has got me sucked in and I've got multiple people sucked into are the pet battles, AKA Pokemon on the friggin' wow game. It is great. You sit there and you want to take a break from quests. You want to take a break from doing your dailies. You want to take a break from PVP. What do you do? You go and you play pet battles and it is great. Or you could play Peggle. Or you could play Peggle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is true. Uh, actually, they took that off. Well, they did? Yeah, uh, it used to be uh, an add-on that you could put on while you were flying from point to point on Curse. Uh -huh. And they took it off because Peggle got so friggin' big. What is Peggle? Peggle is nothing but uh, an alleyway type game. Yeah. And uh, it was great because when you were flying, you could sit there and play a little Peggle game, a little alleyway game while you went from point A to point B. Because sometimes it could take a while. Yeah. I mean, granted, mages have ports. They could port you to any major city and some other cities and stuff like that, major points. But you so still no sometimes... So there's no fast travel and well at all. No, you, you would still have to travel from one point to another point, you know? Yeah. Uh, granted, they still... Uh, the best things that they had were uh, for, like, uh, dungeon runs and stuff where you could find people and not have to travel to that particular dungeon and they would give you rewards for, for doing random dungeons and things like that to entice people to do these dungeons, which is great. But um, as I was discussing with another another person of mine, actually quite a few, that they are making everything multi-realm and it is horrible. Keep it multi-realm for when you want to do a dungeon. Or you want to do PvP because it is a pain in the butt to try to get people who are on your server. And if you're on a low pop server trying to do some of these things, you will wait forever. So those are great. But if you're questing, don't put someone from another realm into my realm to help them do their quests. Yeah. No. If you want to be, if you want to do nothing but quests, fine. Go to a low pop server. Go to a PVE where people do what they got to do and then leave. But don't sit there and have people farm for like these pet battles like I do. I want a particular pet in general and has a low spawn rate. I've had a person of the opposite faction circle this one area for this one pet that spawns like every hour. And I finally see one. He swoops down, does what he has to do. I'm like, fine. I wait another hour. It pops up. He comes down, swoops down to pick it up again. Why? Because all he wants is the rare. They're randomly generated to be a, ter a certain type from poor... To rare. And now, rare has better stats. Did you send that guy a message and tell him chill out? You're trying you to get You can't that? because he's of opposite, opposite faction. What? And you can't do nothing about it to Blizz to send in a ticket and be like, look, you know, I've been waiting here for like three days for this damn pet, but this one person keeps flying and taking it, and they're like, well, it's we can't do anything How about it. How do they it. know it's going to be there? Because it's there's an there's an add-on that that shows you where certain creatures, certain pets spawn. And what? certain creatures only spawn in small, small, tight areas. Mm -hmm. And let's just say, for example, uh, a rat, which you can find just about anywhere, is like covering the map. You can find them anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you wanted an elemental. And that elemental only spawns in this small, tiny spot. Right. And when it spawns, there's only one per day or per hour or whatever. And you have these people that are literally hovering over that one area to get this rare rare spawn and when they get it they're like oh it's a poor quality or oh it's a it's a common quality which means it's a lower stat rate right instead of uh they implemented stones that you can get either through the pet battles that are the wild pets or even through your pet uh trainer battles where you sometimes get a stone to upgrade any pet from a whatever grade to a rare grade instantly yeah which sometimes it will if it's 15 or higher level 15 or higher it'll lose two levels yeah but it'll become a rare and it'll have better stats yeah. well instead of using one of those stones on this hard to find 
thing and then moving on so that somebody else can get it. They hover until they can get that blue. So for me waiting and waiting and waiting, I would have to have somebody literally, I, I've done this before, PVP a person to distract them so I could run and go get that pet real quick, and then I'd have to do the same in return. Because since they're hovering, they can get there quicker. Exactly. Than you. And even though I may have the same flight speed as someone else, because my computer's slower and because it's kind of it renders things a lot slower, so for me to get somewhere it's a little bit laggy, I may move, lose out because I have an older computer versus a faster computer. How do they distract them? Go like I said, they them? go to PvP. As soon as somebody oh, sits there, fighting them. exactly, and they sit there and go, well, who's hitting me? They turn around sometimes, and it deters them from what they were doing. I swoop in there and get what I have to do. Oh. But when, it's really hard when you have people of your same faction doing that, you know, trying to look for that one pet, and you can't do nothing about it. Yeah. So what I have to say to those folks out there, be happy with what you got. Grab what you want and go. Yeah. You're not the only one who wants these pets because everybody wants to show off that they got this really awesome pet. And it's not just something that you can get in the open world. You can get pets still from dungeons, and those are random drops. And some of those dungeons you can't do but once a week, and it's a random drop. So, yeah. you know, that just be neighborly, you know? Everybody wants to enjoy these pet battles and all this other stuff. And... The last thing I'll say about MOP, and then y'all can do y'all's things, is that they should implement a type of arena system for these pet battles. I know that you can PvP and it'll randomly put you with somebody and stuff, but me personally, I wouldn't mind seeing two people going head-to-head -head and watching as a spectator to see what, what teams they use, what tactics they use, what spells or, or abilities for those pets that they use as a learning experience, as an, an incentive to, to find those particular pets or to, to put that type of team together. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, But I know that they've done certain arenas before and they're dead. Like nobody goes there. Uh, so I can understand if they take it or leave it or whatever, but I don't know. Let me know what you think if you're a WoW fanatic, if you're a pet fanatic and you like that whole system. I wouldn't mind knowing what y'all think about it. And that's it for my little breakfast buffet. Now it's time for Pee's Picnic. Baby. Got Bring some DMC up. first thoughts for us? The forks, the spoons, yes, sir. and the 40. I'm on mission 10, so I'm, in, I'm, I'm at least halfway through DMC, Devil May Cry. Um, I, 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 I was one of the people who was skeptical about this reboot because I was a big fan of the old Dante. Wasn't quite sure about how I felt about the, the, the new look for Dante. But uh, after playing it, I'll, I must say I'm I'm a believer now. It's it's a great reboot. The uh, sweet. The the combat is at just as good as it ever has been. There's if a grading not system on the combat too. Yeah, there is, yeah. and uh, also uh, the story is better than it ever has been. This is the best story out of any Devil May Cry. It's a real game. edgy story. It is from what I hear. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it, it's got a lot to do with like politics and real world things that people can can relate to. Uh, as well as being off the wall and crazy and demonic all at once. So uh, they did a really good job with crafting the story on this one. Uh, graphically, you know, it's not the best game to come out this year, uh, but uh, it's it, it's it looks good. I like the cinematics. I thought the cinematics were very choice. Yeah, yeah. They were definitely well done. Uh, the voice acting, Jay Ray will be glad to know, is Top notch. The demo's voice acting was pretty good. Yeah, top notch voice acting. No, I am my voice actors. So um, better be freaking spectacular. Yeah, but I'm loving it. Uh, preliminary, I'm going four and a half. Uh, four to four and a half frags on Devil May Cry. Uh, Doom Three BFG Edition. We were talking about this a little bit during the awards. Uh, I got this uh, for Christmas. Uh, if you like Doom Three, you will love it again. It's a uh, same great game, but the graphics are a thousand times better. Plus, it's got all the DLC missions that came out for it before. Plus, it's got the new uh, the Lost missions, which are also great. And uh, you don't have to play through the game to get to the Lost missions. Uh, when you load up Doom 3, you can choose to play the campaign. You can choose to play the DLC missions. Or you can choose to play the Lost missions straight out the gate. So uh, I, I thought that was nice. Um, that was very nice. It was. Uh, Doom 3 BFG, uh, I'm going four frags on that. Oh, um, foe, foe, foe. Ghost Recon Raven Strike DLC. Uh, this was on sale for half off uh, as the sale of the week on Xbox last week. So I went ahead and I picked up all the DLC for Ghost Recon Future Soldier because it was all half off. And, and uh, uh, you are with your sales. I love me a sale. 
And uh, the Raven Strike DLC, it, it's good. It's really good. Uh, the first mission, they actually strip away all the future stuff. You have to go in without your active camo, without all that. Really? Well, without all... All your gadgets and stuff. It's just you and your gun and being stealth. Reminds me a lot of the older recons, uh, the, the older Ghost recons. And I think that's the feel they were going for with that first mission. Uh, the second mission is a pain in the rear. Uh, you start out, uh, you cannot be detected in the second mission. Cannot or you fail. All right. Now, that's usually not a problem for me. With the second mission, you clear out, uh, you're making your way to a barn, you go and you clear out the barn, that's not a big problem. But then you get to this giant wheat field, and the whole wheat field has been cleared out, so it's a giant open area, there's guards everywhere, and you have to get across the field. But there's no, you can't just walk across the field, you've got to take out some guards to get across that field, or you're going to be spotted. Well, it's hard to take out a guard without being spotted, because there's so many eyes on that field. Mm -hmm. that no matter who you take out somebody from some angle sees you somewhere it must have took me eight or nine tries to get through that second mission uh, but I tell you once it was done I felt a big feeling of accomplishment I was like yeah I got it's always those. good I got those in efforts the balls got dropped Ooh. and then uh the third mission uh you're in like the streets of Germany or something like that or Russia and there's uh four key targets and you've got to assassinate all four of them and that's probably the best mission out of all of them uh it's the most action packed uh and I, I liked the I liked the urban setting of that mission uh in, in the city versus you know wheat fields and all that uh, craziness but yeah raven strike dlc if you got ghost recon it's definitely worth checking out uh, if you don't if you if you check out only one deal uh, only one of the dlcs for ghost recon raven strike is the one to check out uh retro city rampage i've been looking forward to that game I played the trial for, for a long time and yeah. i downloaded it the day it came on xbox live arcade and it, it, it's great it's it's a lot of fun the trial seemed fun to me and i only played the trial and played the whole game but i don't know if i really liked it just because it was almost too retro for me you know I, what i mean i like i like the fact that it was i know retro. you do but and it, don't get me wrong it's a great idea and if you do like retro stuff like that you will like it because yeah. it is fun. I just personally thought it might have been been a little too retro. It was like an eight bit game. It was. You know, it was supposed to be though. I know. Oh, I know. That was the point of it. But I'm not sure if I really liked that about it. But um, I'm gonna go three and a half frags on Retro City Rampage. Um, Sonic All Stars Race and Transform. You already know. We've talked about this a little bit uh, today already. Love Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed. Uh, one thing I really like about it is that it doesn't make the first Sonic All-Stars racing game obsolete because Transformed, it, it, it's it's a whole different beast than the first Sonic racing game was. You know, the the first Sonic racing game is a straight-up kart racer, whereas this one is it's a kart racer, it's a flying racer, it's a boat-on-the-water racer, it's everything. And they've got tons of other little challenges, boosting challenges, drifting, tons of stuff to do, um, tons of characters to unlock, courses to unlock. It's just a great, great game. And I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, five frags. Holy moly. Five frags for Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform. Not just because it's Sonic, right? No, no, not, not just. No, no, no. Not, not just because we tweet Wait, Sonic just Sonic, Sonic is the Sonic, shit. Sonic, Sonic Generations was a great game. I didn't give that five. That was four and a half. But yeah, yeah this is five frags. Uh, if you buy any... Even even if you're not a fan of racing games, even if you're not a fan of kart racers, you will still like Sonic All Stars Racing Transform because it's just that great of a game. Uh, and lastly, Sonic the Fighters. This is a game. Uh, me and Jerry were talking about this game recently. How he th I I was telling him that it was Dreamcast graphics, and he was thinking it was Super Nintendo graphics. No, I know it came out on on Dreamcast, but the, the graphics to me did they're not 3D. look good. They're 3D. They just didn't look good to me. They don't. They don't. They don't, they don't look good, but they're not 16 bit. I know, but they, they <laughs> they're sure, not Super Nintendo. <laughs> they sure. They sure as hell could have been. Well, I can tell you one thing about this game. If you uh, if you like achievements, go ahead and download it because you will get yourself 400 gamer score within a matter of 15 to 20 minutes. Really? Yep. Uh, I, uh, I went ahead and played through the arcade uh, version of it where you fight each character one time Yeah. Uh, and uh, got an achievement for pretty much every fight. And by the time I finished the game, I had gotten all the achievements, all 400 gamers score within like 20 minutes. So I take it you like the game. 
it, I mean, it, it was it was a fun distraction. I'll probably never play it again, especially now that I've gotten all the achievement points. But uh, if you're interested, if you're a Sonic fan, and you're interested to see how Sonic would be in a fighting game, uh, this is probably your only option. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, probably to it. It is your only. Option. Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, there there probably won't be another one like this unless they decide to do a sequel to it, which is doubtful. Um, I will give that one three frags, and that's being generous. Probably two Ooh. and a half. Uh, but yeah, so those are my reviews for now. Uh, I just picked up uh, Persona uh, Persona 4 Arena, Fun. which I can already tell is going to be a great game. I'm not going to put any frags on it yet because I've only played it for about five minutes before, right before the show today with Steve. Uh, and I'll have final thoughts on uh, Devil May Cry next show. And now with that, we are on to uh, Jay Ray's Kona, where he's serving up the fiends. <laughs> <laughs> Out to the Kona. Out to the Kona. So, uh, yeah, I've actually got four games to talk about. First one I'm going to talk about is uh, Dragonborn, because it's the shortest. Yeah. Dragonborn, we've talked a lot about. It's uh, great. It's a complete Still open is. world, a complete new, completely new map. So many secrets that... I mean, you you couldn't even figure them all out unless you got online and looked at them. There's a, like there, it's also great because getting this DLC will let you respec your skill points. It will, and it, once you beat it, you can completely respec any category you want. That, 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 that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yep. You uh, you just open up the book and it takes you right there, and you can get uh, you can respec any category you want. Another thing, as far as Dragon Board is, there's these thing called black books, and there's eight of them. And they and all give you a special, they a special all ability. Give you a special skill. There's actually ten total, but there's eight that give you a special skill, and uh, you get an achievement for getting unlocking five of them. For getting five of them, I got that. Too. So you know, you go around. You can just take it to the. Uh, I forgot the guy's name, but you can take it to him, and he'll tell you where a new one is and some new quests for any of them. I had been waiting for a respec option because when I when I first started playing, I started out as a light armor guy. Mm -hmm. But then as I played more, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go heavy armor. So by, by, by the time I did that, I had already pumped a good eight, maybe even nine skill points into light armor. And I was never using light armor anymore after that. So those skill points were for nothing. So I was like, I could be using those skill points other places so much better during dragonborn i just started using light armor because i had upgraded my heavy armor all the way and i wanted to upgrade light armor so i could wear the death brand armor which is awesome and uh also if you get the uh, as it alls if you do the as it all quest which takes a total of 12 days you you, you want that the because not only do you get the boots that let you walk on water they you also get the ring uh, for ignite uh, one of the items also gives you plus 10 to enchanting. Yes. Which is big things. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Also, not are you talking about Deathbrainer or Azadal? Azadal. Azadal, yeah. Azadal, yeah. yeah. Azadal, you get a ring that has the two best spells in the game. You cannot get these spells by reading spell books. Yep. You, you have to have this ring, and it is Ignite <clears throat> and uh, Freeze, I think. Yeah. Ignite does it's only an apprentice level skill but it doesn't take hardly any mana and you can continuously cast it if you do it does damage over time for 10 seconds burning damage well if i triple it up it's doing three times that damage over 10 seconds you can get off about 10 spells and i mean stack it 10 times and it is massive damage so wear that ring it's called the as it all ring of uh, destruction i think i I saw the plus ten to enchanting on the on that one item and almost shit a brick. I mean that that, that is rare. Big kind of, big things. Yeah. I mean there is hardly no items that give you put give you plus to enchanting. That is that's right. That is right. Uh, there's also a ghost boss. Water walking is big things too. Yeah, it is. There's also a ghost boss where his if you find the skull, you would never know th this even exists. But if you go find the skull, which is in a completely separate place, then you're doing another dungeon and you see his body. You gotta actually take the skull out and drop it and arrange it with his body. And then he comes up and it's this big secret ghost boss that you can fight. Yeah. Uh, man, there's so much, uh, there's so many new words of power. You can ride dragons now, yeah. which is really cool. <laughs> there, uh, I, I could go on and on uh, with the, it. The, the dragon aspect shout is awesome. That's my favorite shout in the game. Um, that and the uh, new... It, it gives you armor on top of your armor. Yeah. And, and it makes your attack stronger. It makes your, your dragon shout stronger, too. So you yeah. want to make sure you put that on. Another one uh, is the cyclone. Matter of fact, uh, there's an achievement for learning all three words of dragon aspect. Yeah, and you, you have to... Or I've already learned all three words of that, but cyclone. 
Cyclone is a new a new dragon shout, and that yeah. one is sick. If especially if you was get, that the one that you got from the uh, uh, Azil's dungeon or whatever. It might have been one of them. I got a dragon shout down there too mm-hmm. during that during that. I'm not, I can't remember where I got it. You might. I think you're right. But if you get all three words to that, it straight up spawns a tornado that takes out everything. It is sick. Um. Man, there's just so much we could talk for days about Dragonborn if we really wanted to. Um, we could. There's tons of stuff to do. And, and, and what, trust me when we tell you that it is almost like getting a Dragon Age game. I mean, I mean a, a Skyrim game. Dragon Age on the brain over yeah. here. Yeah, it, it's like getting a whole other Skyrim game because the map is, is that big. Yeah, it is. Side quests galore. Um, so not just one or two types of armor, new armor to craft. There's like five because yeah. you've got the stall room, you've got the bone mold, you've got the. Uh, the the Morig Tog, yeah. uh, I mean, man, I, I, I'm giving five frags to that DLC all day. I thought it was the best DLC to come out in a very very long time for not just Skyrim but any game. Yeah, probably the best DLC since Minerva's Den for Bioshock yeah, too. Very possible. Yeah. So next one, Forza Horizon. <clears throat> Forza Horizon. Now you said this was your favorite racing game of the year. Yeah, and I love it. It's a typical Forza game with the graphics and the controls. But it's the... supposed to be more of an arcade feel to it, right? Well, yeah, that's what I was about to get into. It, it, it's the cars feel all Forza, like simulation, straight simulation Forza. You can tune your cars. You can add, customize every single little aspect of your car from the drivetrain, all the everything. And and I, but it feels like the an game, arcade. The game has like four hundred sets of rims in it. By real companies, uh, it, that's how crazy it is. But yes, the only the, they it's not an arcade racer. Do not let get it confused with an arcade racer because it is absolutely not. It is a simulation game. The difference is they have arcade aspects of it as it is a street racer now, as opposed to a track racer. Right. Whereas you're driving through countryside, the game's uh, open world. It right? is at open world 100 percent with fast travel points you can unlock by doing challenges. Uh, there's collectibles in the world, and and if you don't want to race, you can just go around doing tricks to get your notoriety up. Um, you can race people to get their car. You, and if I'm just driving through the open world doing my own thing, I can go up to somebody, beat next to them, line up, race them through a little section, and win their car. Nice. Um, you also can do different types of races. Race against jets, helicopters. What? Um, yeah. It, uh, I mean, there, it, this game is so vast. It, it's it, The terrain was one of the things I was most excited about because there are so many different types of terrain just in this little section of this city that you're in. And there's snowy areas. There's hills. There's plains. I mean, it's just, it's a phenomenal racing game. It does have arcade aspects, but I would still classify it as a simulation racer because of how in-depth that it is. Right. Arcade racers, you should be able to pick up and play. This, you got to spend time doing your little adjustments and stuff, buying cars and all that. Right. Uh, Forza Horizon, 4.75. Don't really know why I'm not giving it five frags. I think just because that it's not, that that they took so many aspects from Forza 4. And it's essentially a Forza Force game and a new on a new concept. Uh, that's the only reason I wouldn't give it five, but I could very well give it five and be happy with it. I couldn't give it five if I couldn't put twenty twos on a Cadillac. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Dishonored, Dishonored, I am almost finished with. Uh, great game, right? Uh, it's it's great. It, it is great. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because it's been reviewed already on this show. But uh, I just will say that I will give it. I, I feel comfortable now that where I can give it a, a pretty hefty score, and uh, I think I'm also gonna go 4.75 with that. Uh, it's worth it. The games I'm reviewing here are. I think all, I think I think I went four and a half just because of the too short. Yeah, and and, and it probably would have got five frags if it wasn't so dang on short for me because it, yeah. It, 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 it's, it is short. The last game, and this is the one only. This is the one I, I want to spend a little bit of time on is Far Cry Three because Far Cry Two was always a game that I liked, but not everybody did. So, I mean, it got great Me reviews and everything. I know, <laughs> I know, you didn't like it. This is not Far Cry Two. Can't stress that enough. I cannot stress it enough because they have changed every aspect of the game except for one thing. And it was something that actually... That's the name of the game. I think I think that one thing... Far Cry. <laughs> no, is the driving. The driving mechanics were not very good in Far Cry 2. They have not. improved them, but it's the same system. And I hate it. 
It's cool when you're on a jet ski or you're on a helicopter or boat or something, but when you are on a car and you're trying to stay on the road, it's it. tough, man. It is so tough, especially in a jungle and hilly environment. It's hard to see. Uh, man, it it has tip top gunplay. Um, the, the the feel of it, it's really responsive. It happens quick. You can have a, create absolute chaos there's a whole hunting system with loads of different animals i mean just loads of them that uh you know on, on some assassin's creed 3 or red dead stuff you know and you have to actually take those skins and stuff that you get and craft different things like uh bigger wallet bigger ammunition ammunition pouches uh you start out you can only carry one gun and not much ammo you have to craft more gun holsters and stuff and it doesn't take much time to do that if you spend some time hunting. And it's fun to do that. But once you get to where you can carry stuff, I mean, you can carry mines, claymores, grenades, uh, you know, all kinds of different stuff. Repair tools, four weapons. Um, there's bows and arrows. Um, there are so many weapons in this game. It, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's like Call of Duty multiplayer with, with weapons. You can put different attachments on every weapon. Red dot, ACOG, you know, all kinds of stuff. It, it's got all the perks of like a Call of Duty game on there too. And you can customize your weapons how you want. Um, different ammunition types for all the weapons. Um, there's bow and arrows, uh, explosive arrows. I mean, you can go on and on rocket launchers, you know, yada, yada, yada. The, uh, the, the main villain, Foss, is one of the best villains. It's like on some Mr. Scratch type stuff because Mr. Scratch is what was such an awesome villain. Uh, Voss is up there, and the voice acting is on par with every character. The story is great, and the reason the story is so great is the guy you actually play as is just with his friends vacationing on this remote island, and they run into pirates. And this guy Voss is one of the leaders, and he kidnaps all these Americans. And ends up, uh, at the very beginning of the story, this isn't a spoiler because it happens right at the beginning. He kills your brother who was an ex-Marine and you relied on him to keep you alive. Well, you end up escaping and uh, you meet the, the Amanaki tribe and they, the story goes on from there. And you'll, you'll, you'll learn about the island and everything. The open world is massive. It is a sandbox game to the fullest extent, but massive. I mean... Uh, massive <laughs> you can go all around there's sharks and alligators you can go swimming and hunt sharks uh the alligator uh, man there's so much stuff this game is so packed with content i cannot even begin to go into to, to how much time it would take you to actually get 100 percent completion there's uh assassination missions uh you know how assassin's creed has so many different types of missions it's like that uh racing missions hunting missions path of the hunter missions there's also an upgrading system that is RPG elements to it. You can upgrade it. There's three very, very large skill trees, and you can get new abilities and skills. Um, I got to I gotta say, I, I've got to go five frags for this too, man. I, I mean, it, it's I love it that much. It, it, if it didn't come out in a year with so many great games, if just to be clear, if Halo 4 wasn't Halo 4, this would have been my game of the year. That's how freaking awesome, that awesome it is. Huh? Yes. But Halo 4 was so awesome. I, I I would still have to say Halo 4 was game of the year. But this is right there. You know, that's how good it is. If you're not a Far Cry 3 fan and you, you're not getting Far Cry 3 because you're not, you didn't like Far Cry 2, go get it. You have to. You have to. Well, if somebody asked you a year ago, you probably would have been betting on Assassin's Creed 3 to be game of the year. Probably so, yeah. I probably would have been. Assassin's Creed Three would still be in my top five, you yeah. know, but it, but it wasn't game of the year. I, I I would put Assassin's Creed probably like four or five on that on that list, you know. But I I, I cannot stress enough though how how unbelievably awesome Far Cry Three is. I really can't. It, it's just man, it's just great. Remember what you heard at third. Remember what you heard at Far Cry Third. <laughs> Far Cry Three, and that's all for J Ray's counter. Boom. Well, I think it's been a, a great, a great very, uh, very first episode of 2013. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. And we will catch y'all, uh, not this week, but the following one for the next episode of Frag Tag Radio. And that will be episode 105. Frag Tag Radio.